Thy will be done. 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 The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of good. And not of evil to bring you a hope and an expected end. Lord, our hearts are open tonight. This is not an ordinary service. This is one of, it's not one of those services. We submit to your word and we ask that it will challenge and change us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Good evening again. Please hug one another. Greet one another before you sit. hallelujah it's good to be back home we apologize we're just returning from a trip we thank god for what he's doing amazing um we just came back from adamawa state it's a lovely place hallelujah brothers if god is taking you that direction we come with a prophetic word it's a safe zone <laughs> Hallelujah. God has been faithful, oh, brothers and sisters. How many of us can testify? God has been faithful. You know, sometimes we take for granted the things that he does in our midst, his faithfulness. Sometimes we take for granted the breath, the life, the energy, the grace. And um, I think that it is important that every once in a while we just take out that time to thank him. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I have learned and I have mastered the art of thanksgiving. My entire life revolves around thanksgiving. Never will I utter a word against his faithfulness. That we are alive. While we were coming, I think I was just talking to one of my people. And there was a ghastly motor accident that just happened probably minutes and seconds. And I know that car some assaulted most likely killed everybody there. Praise the Lord. And um, sometimes we take for granted that we are alive and healthy. But I have learned to give him praise. My soul will always praise him for his faithfulness. Every time I come in for koinonia once, I just step down from the car and I look at god's people hungry and ready to receive my heart is gladdened but i still give him thanks because it's not as easy as this for everyone hallelujah that's why i raised that song you are good and your mercy endures forever it is very important this probably is already a prophetic word for someone never ask god for anything when you have not given him thanks for what he has given you before you must have that attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is the secret for more. Anything you don't thank God for, you will never see more of it in your life. Anointing, influence, power, revelation, grace, whatever it is. Hallelujah. Learn to give God thanks. Thanksgiving has to do with nothing uh, around your circumstance. Many of us say, I want to make sure that things are happening. My no, 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 no. The Bible says in everything, give thanks. Praise the Lord. Listen, you cheat, you cheat Satan in a remarkable way when your heart is stayed on thanksgiving. Are we together now? There are people who didn't get admission, probably. I'm sure, I've gotten only God knows how many text messages. There are people who trusting God for jobs, marriages, other people celebrating testimonies of what God has done. As far as thanksgiving is concerned, it makes no difference. You must cultivate the culture and the attitude of thanksgiving. And you will see God move beyond your prayer point. You will see God move beyond your prayer request. 
brothers and sisters and he will do things in your life that will surprise you this is the god that i serve this is the god that i know when you thank him for his finger we say you will see his hand and when you thank him for his hand he will reveal his entire self hallelujah can we take out one minute to thank god is that too much lift your voice in one minute just count your blessings don't complain don't say god if you only give me a better job all those things are, are deceptions from the pit of hell to rob you and cheat you the bible says enter his gates with thanksgiving i was talking to a lady who has been on admission in the hospital for the past i think two and a half years and all you will hear from that lady's mouth is melody she's not thinking of marriage she had a very good job before she became sick a terminal disease leukemia it's almost a death sentence yet this lady is always praising the lord and there are people who are complaining about job complaining about husband complaining about no money storming the gate of heaven with a lot of noise that reveal immaturity lift your voice and say i am grateful i can never repay you but from my heart i like to say that i Thank you. I will never repay you, but from my heart, I'm saying, Lord, that I thank you. Thank him for everything he has done. Lord, for your faithfulness. There are many things you are yet to do, but I thank you for the ones that I have seen. I'm alive. You spoke to me that you will keep me throughout this year. And I thank you. I've not spent money on drugs. Thank you because the desires of my enemies have not come upon me. Lift your voice and thank him. The psalmist said, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say. Have you forgotten that he alone is a shield for you? The Bible calls him your glory and the lifter up of your head. Please thank him. This is not our teaching tonight, but I feel that I need to keep putting in us that attitude of thanksgiving. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Go ahead and thank him. For your family members for faithfulness a gentleman has been sending text messages to my phone i think for the past three days his eyes are going blind completely blind from glaucoma another family is trusting the lord for over 2.5 million to to fly their father to india for a surgery that will destroy him listen don't take for granted what god is doing you are complaining but it's because your mouth can talk you are grumbling only because your legs can walk forget about all that you think god has not done and tell him thank you thank you you're complaining of admission but it's because you can read and write lord jesus we are deeply grateful deeply grateful deeply deeply grateful we acknowledge you you are faithful thank god for koinonia thank god for what he's doing lord we thank you amazing things by the spirit you need to only travel out of this region to see what the teachings are doing in the lives of people we give you thanks we're not ungrateful people we choose to see what you are doing it's a choice we choose to see what you are doing and we thank you hallelujah praise the lord cultivate this attitude and you will cheat satan you will cheat impatience you will cheat failure once once you come to a point where you are a great person the devil cannot do anything with you again because you thank him job said though he slay me yet will i praise him the bible says it is a good thing to give thanks to the lord to sing his praise in the morning hallelujah we live in a very ungrateful generation very ungrateful we always want more 
Lord, you've given me five children. How about adding two more? Lord, my salary is 300,000. Can't you make it 500,000? Right? Lord, you delivered me from accident, but when will another car come? Very ungrateful. There's this lust for more. But those who reign in life are those who can say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Learn this. And this is a key that will open you up to unprecedented realms. Things you never prayed for will follow you like a charm because you are grateful. Hallelujah. Pay attention to what I'll be teaching tonight because I believe the Lord will bless us very, um, very powerfully. The teachings that come here attempt to challenge our mindsets and build us. In recent time, I've been studying, um, I have studied this, but I've been paying detailed attention to the exact spiritual requirements that make a man usable you notice that the teachings that have come in the last maybe three or four weeks have been centered around preparing us to be able to host the glory of god this is the pursuit of people people wonder why certain people are mightily favored right certain ministries are used by god and i have been editing my philosophies and my understanding about why God will seem to deposit heavy dimensions of his glory and his anointing. And I have been amazed at the things that I've been discovering. When you get the teaching the man God uses, there I teach on a factor that I've learned. I used to think the secret of spiritual power is just Bible studies and prayer and fasting. And while that is important, in recent time as I have grown and as I have come into deep intimacy with the holy spirit i found one factor that overrides them all i told you motif right let me do a quick recap on, on it and then we'll build up from there that the number one reason why many people do a lot of spiritual activities please pay attention this has nothing to do with ministry the number one reason why people keep doing a lot of spiritual things with little result is that fundamentally our motives are corrupted our motives are wrong. Many men of God want power because they want to prove to people that they are not failures. I've told you it's not enough reason for God to give you the anointing. Again, let me use an illustration that I gave, an example. Remember, um, what's her name? Anna and Penina, right? The Bible tells us that Penina had children and Anna was buried. Anna kept praying and praying because she was trying to stop the mockery of Penina. And God said, it's not enough reason for me to give you a child. Until she changed her motive. And her motive became to return that son back as a prophet unto God. She prayed just once and a baby came. Your motive overrides your fasting. Please hear me. Your motive overrides night vigil. Your motive overrides moving from prayer house to prayer house. Your motive overrides sowing a seed. You can tap into anything you want to tap into. God will scan your motive until he finds himself there. Otherwise, you will never taste of his glory. How many preachers want fame? How many preachers want power? They, they just want a situation where they are considered to be a success. As good as that is, it's not enough reason for you to host the glory of God. So our motives. Hallelujah. There are so many ladies who want to get married to prove to people that um, I am not like the rest. You'll never get a husband that way. You can choose one for yourself, but not the one God will give. There are many people who want to do a lot of things people labor to try to buy a car you ask them why they say somebody dead me and i did betting with the person you will never buy that car believe me except not god's way you are ready to frustrate yourself people want to build houses you know and please i, I want us to be very careful because our society is built upon creating an unhealthy pressure upon people to prove points are we together prove points and if you don't deliver yourself from that mess you will rob yourself 
of the glorious destiny that you have in Christ. Your motive. I always examine my motive. Since the Lord taught me this, I always examine my motive to make sure that the things that I do are from a genuine motivation to see his glory come. I sat down at the airport this afternoon and I was just, or this morning, and I was just thinking, what is this all about? We've been up and doing for weeks and from Lagos down to Abuja, down to Adamawa, and then back tomorrow we are on another trip again, you know, and it continues like that. And I sat down and, and I started asking myself, what is all this about? Is it just a young man trying to build a ministry? Or is it, are you trying to pursue a vocation called preaching? Or are you trying to advance your name? Sometimes you need to draw away from the crowd and sit alone. How many of us still practice that? If you don't, you are already dying. Let me assure you. If you are so busy that you cannot take out time. White people used to do this. This is what I love about white people. Nigerians keep making the same mistake for decades because we never take our time to think. A white man will have a, a vacation away and just go and sit down under a tree in a forest and start asking themselves, no matter how stupid the questions are, at least they are all to themselves. I want us to begin to practice this art of retreat. Not just locking yourself in the room and praying and sweating there. Sometimes you just need to walk alone. Go to the dam and sit down and say, where am I going? What is all this about? I ask myself this all the time. Especially when we go for meetings and God does great and mighty things and you see the way people are responding. Oh, this is the Joshua Selman. When I go back, I just think, and what is this all about? Because I plan to be doing this for the rest of my life. And I'm going to live for a very long time. So what is this all about? Just preaching? Just being one man of God or just so somebody will write a book about great men that God has used and then put my name motive you must take out time in your life to sit down at that point the spirit of God can minister to you he can tell you take note you have started derailing from the pure passion to see God and you started looking for a name for yourself be careful at that point, you readjust. That's what we call repentance. Are we together? Or I see that you love me, but you've started having a desire for something else. And then you come back. Most times, we are so busy. So busy. We don't take our time to examine our motive. Hallelujah. Your motive is like, is like a metal. It can wear and tear. And occasionally you need to go back to that threshing floor where you re-examine everything. If your motive for ministry, for instance, is money, the day you have the money, because you will have it all in abundance, more than you can think of, you will never have any passion for God again. If your motive is fame, what happens when your name is everywhere? Right? If your motive is to have crowds, what happens when there are so many people? If your motive is to be a celebrity, what happens when the spotlight is on you? Some of us, the way you are looking at me like this, behind the physical innocence you claim to portray is a very corrupt motive. And by corrupt, I don't mean immoral necessarily. I mean that it's not in sync with that pure desire to see his kingdom come. I see the way pastors lobby for power. As if it's a, it's a recharge card they are trying to buy or as if it's another phone they want to change. You will think all that passion is because they love the sheep. You will think that passion is because they want, I mean, you see people dry. They come out and they are like a skeleton. They can't even talk. What are you doing? Fasting. Say for what? Say, I'm tired of my status and you will imagine and say oh god help this guy he will kill himself and god says leave him there 
just leave him there and you finish your 10 days dry and then nothing happens then they get frustrated and in their frustrating their frustration they look at everyone that god is using and say this person you, you can't be genuine because i did what is supposed to be the requirement and i did not get it motive motive we do night vigils and we pray. We run around our parlors, our bedrooms. We lock ourselves. We sit on toilet seats for hours, yelling at the gates of heaven. Oh God, give me power or I die. We are trying to be like John Knox. But we don't have his passion. And you shout there and be angry and heaven does not even respond. Motive. Yet yeah, there are people who just lift up their voices and cry one word from heaven and it's like it's like god owes them a debt he must pay the moment they call on him he's obliged to respond i tell you the key is your motive everybody says search my heart oh god say it from the depth of your heart search my heart say try my thoughts and deliver me from any wicked way say it again search my heart oh god try my thoughts oh god and deliver me from any wicked way one mother called me complaining seriously about her daughter and um is someone i know and she said apostle wouldn't you tell your daughter to i mean no marriage no job what, what kind of lady is this I'm, I'm tired of what people are telling me I said, Mama, I love you very much, but let me tell you the truth. As good as that is, it's not enough reason for God to give her a husband. Because children are not doll babies. They are real human beings with destinies. And there must be a very serious reason as to why God will bring a man and a woman and commit a destiny for them to raise for decades. It cannot just be to avert the shame that comes with somebody getting old and not getting married. As sincere as that is, our motives must be changed. Are we together? This is so powerful. It's one of the biggest secrets of this ministry and the hand of God. Motif. Very sincere desire to see his glory come. Nothing more and nothing less. hallelujah so your motif that was what I talked about tonight I want to talk very briefly and then we'll pray on the subject of love I call it the mystery of perfection the mystery of perfection I want to talk about love a very powerful secret again that brings the presence and the glory of God upon the life of a man and an individual. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything that's my confession to you. I love you Jesus I worship and adore you just want to tell you that I love you more than anything I asked the Lord recently Listen, I asked the Lord recently a very serious question. I said, Lord, is it really true that you want to use everybody? Can everybody really be used by God? Or is it that according to his predeterminate counsel, there are just a few people? Because it looks like in every territory, there are many people who are not serious with God. Then a few who are taking God seriously. Then one or two or three people who are mightily used by God. And I asked the Lord recently. I said, Lord, what is, what is really 
the key why, why is it that it looks like you are mising your presence why is it that it looks like you are mising your power what exactly is the key and the lord told me something he said my people do not have the love of god in their hearts this thing is a very serious issue what i will teach you about love are direct words some of them i will be writing them the way that i had the lord speak to me he called it the mystery of perfection the reason why people do not rise into the realm of spiritual perfection is because fundamentally they lack love this thing called love our generation gives love a feminine character every time we think love we're thinking this is a feminist word you know it's for ladies it has to do with affection i'm not talking about affection at all the subject of love has been the hindrance to the healing power of god has been the hindrance to financial prosperity coming upon individuals and ministry the subject of love has been the reason why god will never give certain people kingdom influence that mantle of honor that people desperately crave for listen carefully is a mystery of perfection very very important matthew chapter 5 jesus began to teach in what we call the beatitudes and he was teaching on the subject of love the lord is really going to challenge us tonight and we'll see how far we have derailed from the precepts of god and we'll see how justified god is in our not experiencing the fullness of his presence let's read from verse 43 we'll be very fast are we there verse 43 it says ye have heard that it has been said that means somebody said it somebody taught it somebody began to advocate it oh it's projected it says ye have heard that it has been said what has been said thou shall love your neighbor and do what to your enemy hate your enemy right listen to jesus's own philosophy verse 44 he said but i say unto you love your enemies and bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you these are very serious instructions coming from the lips of god he says and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you 45 he says that ye may be what children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh the sun oh look at this look at this he's, he's giving us a character of god he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and he sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust look up there is a poisonous philosophy that is eating the body of christ fabricated by preachers fabricated by denominations fabricated by individuals that is short-circuiting the new levels of glory from coming to our lives and it's the simple subject of love from god's perspective Look at what God says should be a Christian's response. Right? But we have been trained. We have designed ourselves around certain very dangerous philosophies. We live in a, a generation that is upset. With, we are obsessed with causes and judgment. Are we together? Especially for preachers. We are always under pressure to prove to people we are anointed and the moment anybody does anything we're thinking i will curse you or this and that will happen to you i will prove to you that if i'm a man of god you will not wake up tomorrow you know we live in that kind of thing and while there is a place and a provision for the justice of god and judgment we are gradually derailing from the principles of the spirit as far as love is concerned we are preoccupied uh, with the, the pressure to try to demonstrate the validity of our anointing and in so doing we are rubbing ourselves out of that which God wants for us 
love the mystery of perfection the secret that brings people into that that level of grace watch the way preachers fight one another in the body of Christ and you wonder you see let me tell you something the fact that you are doing something wrong and still seeing the glory of God does not mean God justifies what you are doing are we together I can for instance be sleeping around and yet see the anointing of the spirit upon my life it, it does not mean God is endorsing this it is part of the sovereignty and the mercy of God so sometimes we get into the illusion that the fact that the presence of God is still present in our lives is a justification that every other thing is all right that philosophy is an ideology that is built as a result of the absence of the secret place for a long time is God speaking to us there are all kinds of things in the body of Christ that are destroying people and, and the, the, the problem there is believers fellow believers are the worst hit in all of this we have churches that attack one another some even very openly are we together now we have men of God that attack one another I think the, the latest one in the body of Christ that is so ugly is the fight between the grace and law right that has even become a war. It's like they have drawn a line. If you're for grace, this side. If you're for law, this side. No. How many ministers have fight men like W.F. Kumui? Right? Because probably deeper life people don't wear earrings. They don't wear this. There are people who have hated that man of God and resented him. How many people have fought men like Pastor Chris? How many people have fought different people with philosophies? Listen to me. Let me tell you the reason why we will never see the power of God that we desire. Enshrined in our hearts is this ideology of hatred and bitterness. We fight people around our lives. Let me give you a few points. Let me not run. Um, the Lord began to tell me three things that has demonstrated that we do not really have the love of God. Number one, this is what the Lord revealed to me. The first sign God gave me that the body of Christ is not walking in love is that we focus on actions above intentions we focus on actions above intentions this is a dangerous ideology where you judge men based on actions and not just intentions the bible tells us this it says man looks at the outward appearance in other words the physical manifestation but God discerns the motive behind our activities. Are we together? So for instance, for instance, I can be a rapper. Let me just give you an instance. I can be a rapper, a Christian rapper. Are we together now? And um, simply because I can come up and I'm just rapping. You can write me off and just look at me and think because I'm rapping I look like somebody who sleeps around. I look like somebody who is not serious with God. And use the actions rather than the intentions. Is the number one mistake that we are making in the body of Christ. That the Lord revealed to me that is a revelation. That the love of God is truly not grounded in our hearts. We focus on actions. While actions are very important. Because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. But many times if you really really want to discern things by the spirit you must sustain a technology in the spirit to discern intentions beyond actions are we together now a preacher may be preaching for instance and maybe communication barrier or something like that he may make a statement like um God's primary assignment is to kill you. Something like that. And all of a sudden, a newspaper says, God's primary assignment is to kill you. Caption. Heresy preached by 
A and B and C. And because we live in a generation that is gullible to hear bad things, we always want to check. Ah, ah, God's assignment is to kill you. Nobody goes to listen to the remaining part of the message and discern the intention. Are we together? And it is based on that we have libeled men of God. It is based on that we have libeled people. How many people are moving around and saying, my mother told me, I, you will see if you succeed. No. To mean that her actions meant she's, she's happy so that you will fail. Is that not true? And then it's, it gets so bad when you now go to a meeting where they say anybody standing against your family, that bed, where, even if it's your mother, you say yes, even if it's my mother. You take that anger and say my mother told me or maybe my father said you are a failure. They may not really mean it. They may be communicating pain at that time. If you have the ability to look at intentions beyond actions, you are a wise man. Intention. As I walk with people, I always try to discern the intentions, the intent of certain things. Physical actions are not guaranteed. They are not the best way of truly revealing our intentions. A wife can come to her husband, for instance, maybe out of frustration about his carelessness, and she can make a statement out of pain and say, look, if you, don't, if you stop giving me money, make sure you are not going to be eating in this house. And the husband says, oh, if I don't give you money, I will not eat in this house. If I give you money, I eat in this house. You claim you are a deacon in your church. Is that what they are teaching you? No, husband, look at the intention. What your wife is trying to say is, I'm hurt by your irresponsibility. And I would love you to do something about it. Are we together? Listen, you, are, you become an exceptional leader, an exceptional believer. If you sustain the ability to discern intentions. We have. We have. Created. Seditions in our families. We have grouped ourselves into two. A family of five people. Father and his favorite. Mother and the other three people. Because of our ability to judge intentions. You look at a man whose face is like that. Whether he's happy or not, his face is the same. You just look at him and say, this guy is a wicked person. You look wicked, I'm sure you are wicked. Whereas that person is the nicest person you will ever meet in your life. Have you seen people like that? I don't like this guy. His face is mean. It's not the person's fault. The person is like that. Your, your face is this. You will never get a wife or you will never do this. We, we judge actions more than it. A woman comes to Jesus with an alabaster box. Are we together? The Bible lets us know that this woman has had a challenging past. And then she gathered one year's wages. Are we together now? Beautiful woman. She steps into a room. And everybody is sitting there. Religious people. Together with the disciples. And this woman comes to Jesus sincerely. And gets down on her knees. And the first thing many people are thinking is seduction. Jesus, you are in trouble. Jesus, you are in trouble. Your ministry is about to die. Nobody is thinking worship. A woman is coming with a genuine motive. Please, while you are laughing, take seriously. These are the things that the Lord told me. They are not things that I guessed. Destroying the body of Christ. The Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. When your mind is corrupted, it becomes the vista from which you interpret everything. Hallelujah. And she kneels down before him. And the Bible says she takes her alabaster box. Breaks it at his feet. Right? And the aroma and the, the fragrance just rises as an incense of worship. That represented her worth for one year. And she broke it. And the Bible says she used her hair. Hey! her hair and then began to clean his feet and Jesus did not do anything about it I'm sure the disciples will say Jesus you better don't play games with us here what is going on madam where do you know this guy that you come and break alabaster box and Judas 
Ah, why are you doing this? You would have gathered everything and let's give it to the poor. The Bible only records what Judah said. He didn't tell us what the remaining said. I can assure you he was not the only person that spoke. But Jesus said, don't, don't stop her. That was the word of God, the bread of life. He was looking at this woman's he said everywhere they talk about him they will also make reference to this are we together now he was able to look at her intentions a woman who was caught in adultery they never brought the man she ran and came to Jesus Christ right and, I mean they pushed her there and they said this and that and that and Jesus looked at them and he saw that woman she felt sorry for herself she felt sad and she was just hoping there would be a hand to hold her and say, you can start again. And Jesus looked at all the psychophants and the religious people. And he says, he who has no sin among you, be the first to cast stones. When you learn to judge the intentions of people, I counsel people a lot. Are we together? And I talk to pastors, I talk to leaders. There are times a man of God can come and meet me and say, man of God, I need you to pray for me. I love God, but I'm dying, I'm dying of immorality. I can easily look at that person and say, you, ah, are your members aware that you are dying of immorality? I look sincerely, and the only thing I tell them is, rebels don't come to God, they run away from him. When you come to God, it's a sign that you are not a rebel. And I look at him. How many times have we injured the wounded soldiers in the body of Christ? Because we look beyond. We don't look at intentions. We look at actions. Are we together now? Love. A husband looks at the wife. And finds out that there is another man who has been suffering. And out of compassion she's trying to help him. And he says, if you are having an affair, tell me now. Let me kill you and kill myself. Why don't you come down and say, okay, I, I, I see your motive that you really want to help this person. But I'm a bit uncomfortable with it. Why don't you structure it and do it this way and that? Do you know this simple thing I've, I'm telling you has broken marriages? Has scattered churches? Are we together? Has produced eternal enemies. Men of God who never see eyeball to eyeball brothers and sisters all kinds of people because we are experts at judging actions above intentions learn this tonight if you are in this you are short circuiting the glory of god from your life meaning he can never send to you a lady who comes to you and say man of god i've been involved in abortion 12 times he said young lady are you seeing that door is still open forward march God is love. The Bible says, For he causes the sun to rise on both the just and unjust. Part of my desire in life is that my hands will remain open as a place of succor for wounded people. That every time they look around and there is nowhere they can run to, they can find a heaven. That we can clean their tears and wash the garments together. And by the grace of God, Koinonia will remain that place. We will never drive our wounded soldiers. We will never drive people that are far away. There are people who have given their lives to Christ. But for some reason, because of pressure, maybe family and all of that, they derailed and they got into all kinds of things. Every time we meet those people, do you go to church now? Say, man of God, I've not gone to church. You are such a stupid person. Jesus helped you. You would have died that day blah 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 and you are a disappointment to the kingdom huh this is what you are doing whereas that gentleman or that lady if you would look at their intentions what they are saying is i need help can somebody please help me we want crowd i wrote a song years ago one day i'll sing it for you it's called the bandage is larger than the wound powerful song if i produced an album I would have blessed people and made money from that song. Worship team, I will give you people when you are ready to write you. Very powerful. The bandage is larger than the wound. 
When his loving arms around you, he binds that broken heart. And then I, I can't remember the rest, but I mean, what a beautiful song. Imagine somebody singing that kind of song to you. Come on. When was the last time someone ran to you and believed that they are coming to you, you will be able to understand them. One of the greatest gifts people can give to you is that trust that you have the ability to understand them. Do you know how people crave to be understood? Are we together now? God, that's why God took out time to send the Holy Spirit so that you can understand him. It pains the Lord when we misunderstand him. When people turn and say, God, if you were alive, why did my father die? If you were alive, why did my mother die? If you were alive, why did I lose the job? So he sends the Holy Spirit to teach you the word. Because in teaching the word, you will correct the wrong ideologies you've had about him. So he will begin to teach you all the laws of the kingdom. And in it, you will now look and say, wow. So my poverty was not caused by you. There is something I did not know. God, you are a faithful God. And I'm sorry for blaming you for something you do not have a hand in it. God left the Holy Spirit so that he will be understood. Listen, come to a point in your life where you learn to judge intentions behind motives. I think two years ago, a man sent me a text. His daughter slapped him. Real daughter, biological daughter. Gave the father a slap and spoke all kinds of nonsense against the man and said this and that and that. If he plays with her, she will arrange, uh, uh, what they call it, all these boys that don't have anything they are doing. You just give them anything and they come and beat somebody for you. Now, he says that they will make that arrangement and come and beat the father. The man was wise because the ego of a man will not tolerate that. He will first kill the lady first before he will look for the man of God that will raise her back to life. But then this man did something. I'm, I'm not just opening up people's secrets. I just want to use it as a point. The man did something that taught me a lesson on fatherhood. When the daughter slapped him and did everything, he picked up his phone and called me. He was ringing, ringing. I saw the number ringing and then I picked up and then he said, ask this person. I said, how are you, sir? It's been a while. And he says, you will not believe if I tell you this, apostle. I said, what is it, sir? He said, can you imagine my daughter? Of course, it doesn't mean he was calm and soft. He was boiling and angry. But he was able to contain himself. My daughter that I gave birth to takes a hand and slap me because she has begun to follow men that are my age. You know, and all, you know how men talk when they are angry. And etc., etc. Et and he did this and that. And then um, I began to talk and I told him, I said, Daddy, I, I know that this is very bad and this and that. And then he calmed down. And then he said, you know what, Apostle, this is, this is where the story is. He said, it reminds me of what we do to the Lord all the time. I felt ashamed at once. I just, I felt, oh God, how many times did I slap you from morning till now? And then the man said, I just wanted to express it to you. I'm her father. I'll walk on it. Until this lady left, she was still attending Koinonia. Ever sorry for that attitude. And today her and her father, I may not call them best of friends, but she honors him with her life because he did something to her. He told me that later in the evening he called her and he sat her down. And he says, any lady that disrespects her parents will die. The Bible says it and began to talk to the lady and I was surprised I was very surprised that the lady booked for counseling when she came for counseling she never knew that the father had spoken to me I wanted to see what she was going to come and meet me for and she opened up and told me said, I did something that is unthinkable I think I'm cursed I said no no you are not cursed this and that and that and that and in my presence she called the father and apologized to him and I have a lot of wine. I carried one wine. I say, apology is not enough. Carry this wine, pray in tongues on it, and go and apologize. Also apologize to your mother. That's her husband you slapped. And all of that. And everything was over. Now, listen, listen. What is the point of all this story? 
the father though angry had the ability to see the motive the motivation and was able to contain himself and by it he won the lady imagine if he fought her and and injured her or did something fire for fire never produces a solution it ends up in ashes this is what many pastors have done this is what many people have done some of us sitting right here this is what we have done to our family members we have brought seditions and bitter hatred among one another especially for families that are polygamous i'm sorry to say it but i have to address it families that are polygamous we are experts at creating intentions i saw stepmother standing near the pot and they said nobody should eat there's trouble no 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 no, no. learn to judge intentions say i receive grace to look beyond actions and see the intentions of people your roommate comes in and she's edgy and moody and all of that and you don't take out time to find out probably she saw her results and things were bad or they just called her at home and said something had happened and you just look and say smile jerry and say please 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 i'm not in the mood say sorry oh. don't ever talk to us too again if you are like that no learn to look at the intentions of people there are people who have passed me for instance sometimes they pass me they don't even greet me i don't turn and say come oh, let's let's define something here no 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 men will love you and they will give your life for you if they know that you are one person who has sustained the ability to look beyond the motives hallelujah yes ago i managed one very serious issue one guy got a lady pregnant and um, the families were coming for counseling and they came and met here they didn't plan to come but the two families came to report the situation and then they met there. It was, it was a catastrophic event that happened. I mean, um, I, I say all of these things just to, just to help you. It was a serious thing. You know, and of course, you know it's not going to be a bed of roses. There will be tearing people and all of that and, and so on and so forth. But the first thing I tried to discern, I wasn't really concerned about the loved ones. I was looking at the individuals. Forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance. Let me tell you something you need to understand. Forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance. If, if I walk up to Tosin today and I insult her, and I just say, sorry, sorry, with the intention of insulting her again, if occasion, it's called rebellion. Forgiveness is only useful. When there is repentance, what is repentance? A genuine state of brokenness and a change of heart. So that you do not misunderstand what I'm saying and then allow people to take you for a ride. Forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance. The second thing the Lord showed me that communicates lack or the absence of the love of God in the body of Christ and among believers is that we hate people and we fight people for sustaining perspectives that are different from ours. This is a big one. We hate people and we fight people for sustaining a paradigm that is different from ours is a major mistake I've seen in the body. The moment your thinking is not like my own Joshua Selman, I hate you. The moment my perspective is not like your own, I hate you. And this is probably a, a very big one, especially among denominations. Because we have tremendous hatred. There are people who will see a lady or a guy from another ministry or another denomination and never knowing the person, they already have anger and hatred and resentment. There are people for, for putting on a watch like this, they can already be angry. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? 
when you just dressing well is enough to create anger there are people when you see somebody who doesn't dress very well you are still angry it's, 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 a, it's an issue of concern but not enough to be that angry we fight people who do not sustain similar ideologies this is what causes trouble between siblings at home this is what causes trouble between pastors are we together now listen if you really want to love people you must have an ability to respect people's perspective about life it is very important the whole world cannot be koinonia the whole world cannot be joshua selman let me guarantee you if the whole world is like me this world will be a mess i repeat if the whole world is like me this world will be a mess i know you like me because i'm preaching you have not seen how boring other areas of my life are trust me if you know how boring other areas of my life are how about coming to meet me wanting to crack a joke and all i'm telling you is scriptures do you like that well forget about the guys ladies do you like that do you want to marry that kind of person <laughs> are we together now you can see the ladies responding it's easy to see me preach and think oh this is wonderful because you are seeing revelation but let me tell you one truth listen brothers and sisters if you don't learn to respect people for their perspectives if I make you if I make Pastor Femi for instance the president of ENI for one year you'll be amazed at the remarkable changes that will happen in the ministry you will find out that koinonia may step into another dimension better ideas better creativity however you must have the ability to um, respect people's ideologies this is why some pastors can never be invited to preach in other churches aside from their churches I've preached almost everywhere I've preached in Serubim and Seraphim. They like me. Oh, two of their branches, I've preached there. I've preached in Anglican. I've preached in uh, um, 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 Catholic, Equa, Cochin, Lutheran. I've preached Open Air Crusade. I've preached all kinds of things. The one with no name. Youth group, charismatic, everything. You know why? Listen. Among other things, I have sustained an ability to respect listen don't major on the minors and minor on the majors i give you an instance you go to minister in a charismatic meeting for instance and then you know uh, um they are they are they are making their their uh, recitations and all of that and you just come because you are a pure pentecostal charismatic you put your hand and you are wondering what the hell is going on here what are all these people doing that terrible childish attitude will put you off when you study global leadership one of the principles of global leadership is the ability to be accommodating yet not compromising the ability the bible puts it this way it says you are in the world but not of the world you don't have to bend to your values but your your ability to tolerate people's differences must be elastic enough to accommodate people with different perspectives and ideologies There are churches where if you don't dance, you are in trouble. Immediately they are dancing. People are dancing. And you just stand, you are just moving around. They say, oh God, please, we dance in this church. No, you, you have no right to harass anybody that way. That's bullying. That's intimidation. Again, in a church where people are generally conservative, someone is just dancing to God and dancing alone. And you just tap him and say, sorry, uh, I don't know what exactly is happening to you. But I think you have, no, it's still wrong. Are we together? If in your house you eat with fork, spoon, and knife, if you come to my house, I say, please bring warm water for me. We don't eat swallow with, with fork and spoon and knife in our house. You should be able to respect that. Not to look and say, Oga, we were all we all grew up in UK and we respect. No, 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 no. You don't do that. When was the last time you were able to be bending enough to accommodate people's differences? And then you will see why many churches are losing members because of the rigidity they are unbending 
there are so many churches their youths are living and running away because they they have put stringent conditions and will not have that sense of accommodation i remember when koinonia started i got a lot of text messages some said look let's go heal song let's sing contemporary others said no 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 we are not proud of africa with nigerians the way you do let's be singing our local songs and i said thank god god didn't call us god called me i will listen to god if you are not comfortable come and sit down after praise and worship there is still a part for you to enjoy are we together love don't fight people that sustain a perspective that is not your own there are churches for instance there are men of god who preach with audio visuals you see them they they have to use powerpoint are we together because of the nature of the teaching grace upon their life they take root words together and put them down and they want to make you understand you may come from a, mi a ministry where the moment they say praise the lord somebody shouting under the anointing now you go to a place where you sit down and somebody is trying to join this word and there and say please i need solid food i i, I what is all this uh, don't i know the meaning of art or of no we don't have that accommodation is robbing us we never are able to see the power of god there are churches that i go to i know that they don't pray in tongues publicly i will minister there you will never hear me pray in tongues once it doesn't mean i've stopped believing in it but i must be able to make that adjustment so that the people can receive are you getting what i'm saying now absolutely there are churches that may not give that kind of accommodation for you to be jumping around like this you can't go to a church, for instance, a core orthodox church, and when you are shouting, the next thing you climb a chair and you are giving an illustration, or you come and tap one elder and say, Prof, come, come, come out, come out. Let me use you as an example. You are messing up. Listen, learn what I'm giving you wisdom. Learn this. Some of us, out of our zeal, you think everywhere is like your church. No. There are churches for putting water on this table. You are, you are going to answer a lot of questions. Not even to talk of five alive or banana or apple you are in trouble apple what for but there are churches if you don't do that they will query you are we together you come and you see banana and orange don't just come and say are they why are they not eating at home no no don't do that i'm teaching you how to love the body because these are the things that cause trouble are we together This keyboard that is playing now, there are churches when a man of God stands everywhere becomes silent. No drums, no moving around, no camera, no snapping. No even saying yes. You know, like you respond, but no, 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 you don't do this. This thing you are doing now, this laughing, no, you don't do that. You are silent and you maintain an attitude of sober reflection. That's all right. That's all right. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There are very few hymns I don't know. That's why when I get to any church, hymn book or not, once you raise the hymn, I will sing it. I think it was in, 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 in um, All Saints or so that I went to minister, I think a year or two or so ago. And then uh, I was telling them that I can, I can recite the Apostles' Creed beginning to end. I was a seminarian. I still am. Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi prayed, prayed, prayed and hoped that I would become a seminarian. But God just decided to come. I'm still a seminarian. Hallelujah. What is your level of accommodation in the body of Christ? Can an equa church invite you as a pastor and you can go and bless the people without breaking people's hearts and doing all kinds of nonsense? Can a Catholic church invite you and you go and get blessed? This is how some of us behave even when we go to certain families. You see men behave like that. You go to the family, you find out that they remove their shoes in front. And you just step and march and enter and they say sorry sir they are even trying to tell you you embarrass the person you are taking and the lady is trying to say my brother i don't know how to tell you but please just remove your shoe my mother is a very neat person i'm not ready for trouble here and they say what is all that according to what the bible says if you enter he that receives a prophet and you start bringing all kinds of childish things and you leave that home and cause trouble for the people the mother now looks and says are these the kind of useless pastors that you move around with let me not see you with any of them 
you must be accommodating yet not compromising I will never fight anybody who sustains an ideology that is different from me including the Muslims most of the people most of the people who have the cars that's why there are many churches Muslims hate them because they hate Muslims are we together now no terrorism and, a, and, and an extremist mindset is not the same I have met a lot of Muslims that are absolutely nice people of course anybody without the Holy Spirit there's no guarantee to the person but I'm telling you there are people who have been able to sustain certain abilities one one of my drivers used to come his his um he has some three children i've never seen well-behaved house girls like that they came to visit me one time during salah and after you know they brought small food for me to appreciate me and all of that and then i gave all of them one one thousand naira and all of them in concert they kept tiny children I said, my goodness, when was the last time a tongue-talking Christian child? You say, baby, how are you? Say, bring it, and he's even crying. This is what we have trained our children to do. Yet we have the audacity. Listen, the Bible says he sends the sun. He makes the sun to rise on both the evil and the good. The only place where you see love is when an accident happens. Everybody rushes to rescue them because they don't want to care who is who. There are some of you, your destiny helpers sustain a paradigm that is different from yours. And if only you could make that adjustment, they can take you from where you are. Maybe the boss, you went to look for a job and you found out that the boss comes from a denomination you hate. And you just turn and say, this is it. See, let me tell you the truth. If you don't change your outlook about the body of Christ, the body of Christ can never be your church alone. I've told you again and again, stop thinking koinonia, think kingdom. Koinonia is only a small fraction of what God is doing. Joshua Selman is only a contributor to the big thing that God is doing. That's why you never see anybody come and stand up here and say, I called upon the God of Joshua Selman. Call upon it, wonderful, but in your room there. Don't come and infect people with an ideology that makes it look like it is just God of Joshua Selman that answers. God of this, God of every true believer answers. If he doesn't answer, you don't know him, you don't know his ways, or he's not your God in the first place. Many men of God are embarrassed so you go to a place how many pastors brothers and sisters go for meetings and many of them cannot preach because of the presence of certain pastors they go somewhere i'm a grace preacher now i can't preach because this person believes in deliverance or believes in casting out of devils or the person who is preaching deliverance now sees another person who particularly doesn't believe maybe everybody let people listen i want you to know as i say this especially for ministries because i'm speaking apostolically listen listen to me listen to me i want you to know that fundamentally the motivation of every true believer is to love jesus and to serve him truly this is the common denominator that binds us all are we together now there are people i love passionately who we do not share the same spiritual ideologies they may not be comfortable with the dimension of the operation of the holy spirit in my life i may not be com comfortable with certain levels of revelation but it does not is not enough reason whatsoever we crack jokes about other things listen the key to friendship is to concentrate on your similarity not your differences when you want to make money focus on your difference but when you want to make friends, focus on your similarity. The anger and the bitterness is growing in the church. The enmity is even becoming, have you seen people, we are the members of this church. We are the members of this sect. We are the members of this prayer house. We are the members of this place. And then these ones come, we are the members of this. We are the ones for Apostle Joshua Selman. This one, we are the ones for this and that. These ones, we are Anglican. These ones, we are this. And all of them, and women of God, are destroying the body of Christ because we are raising people who are like political loyalists to a party rather than raising people who are kingdom conscious. Let me tell you what is making. If we don't correct this, 
most of our youths for instance who come to meetings like this and test certain superior levels of the word of god and the power of god some of them go back to their churches and then they don't go back with a heart of love they go back with cynicism and hatred the moment the pastor mounts up the podium they are angry because they are trying to compare what he's saying with what Apostle Joshua Selman says. And they feel this guy, even an usher in Kononia, knows more revelation than this guy. What did you even call your name? If you are doing that, stop it now. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Stop it right now. There is more to a pastor than the ability to preach. Wisdom. Experience. Pain. There are too many things that qualify a man to be a shepherd preaching is only one of them you may differ in ideologies but I want you to know that you must sustain that ability that whether it is Anglican or Catholic or deeper life or cherubim and seraphim or whatever it is the truth is that any true believer that loves the Lord with his heart and professes the name of the Lord Jesus Christ deserves that reception and there are times that to blend you may need to make adjustments even though temporal adjustments you must make the adjustments if i go to minister for instance in maybe all saints and the rest i'll not start um, raising songs like um, shalom shalom no 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 how many of them know that song there i'm going to raise a powerful hymn and you see our mothers lift up their hands and thank God. I will adjust in a way that will open up their spirits to receive what God is saying. Is God giving us wisdom? This has destroyed the body of Christ. Some come and say, I am for Paul. Others come and say, I am for Apollos. Others come and say, I am for Agabus. And we men of God love it. We pride ourselves in all this political thing. There are men of God who never see eyeball to eyeball. They never pick one another's cult. In Nigeria, men of God have sent assassins to other people. No, no. Are you not amazed that whether it's Pastor Chris's crusade or Benny Hinn's crusade or Renhard Bonke's crusade or um, um, Dr. Olukoya's crusade or WF Kumui's crusade, you are seeing miracles happen. You are seeing God. At least we know that these people love God and they are serious. You can't say they are fake. Are we together now? It should tell you that if the same God who showers his anointing and grace upon them he knows what he's looking at. The exact requirement. Brothers and sisters, let's not forget that it's the same heaven we are going to. Heaven doesn't have branches. So this annoyance and this resentment that we have against one another, it should never be that way. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments never become an object of division in the body of christ don't become the reason why the church becomes divided hence powerless don't be the one sowing seeds the one sitting down to gossip and compare men of god and compare who has revelation and who has anointing in the meeting don't let that devilish thing be part of your life you must be able to embrace the diversity of the body. God knows the reason why he left every denomination. The full church is what will reveal Christ. Any denomination you kick out will produce an incomplete church. Let me tell you the truth. Those of us who have this religious advocacy to wipe out other denominations and eventually have our denomination stand. No, sir. No, sir. It's deception from the pit of hell. I came from an orthodox background before I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I started walking in the power of God 
and I thank God for that orthodox background because it's what has kept character in me right now. I'm sorry to say it, but a lot of Pentecostal charismatics, because of our understanding of the kingdom, there is a lot of carelessness and imbalance. That's why a pastor can be preaching, yet he's sleeping around. And he says, no problem, whatever happens, is a, I mean, God is a merciful God. That foundation, they didn't get me filled with the Holy Spirit, but they gave me a basis of understanding. I remember then in the seminary when, when we will have, you must, your quiet time, it was, it was now, he's, he's now, I think he's now, uh, is he a venerable now? I can't, I, I don't know what he is right now. God bless him forever, forever, a man who changed my life. He wrote a quiet time manual, we will recite scriptures every day, every day, whether you like it or not, you must recite scripture. Your quiet time manual, you must do it. Whether mechanically or religiously, you shall must do it. Because they, they supervise all of those things. I was trained in the Anglican. You never greet somebody standing to look at the person like this. This is how you greet, bowing down. No matter how tall you are. If two of you are fighting outside, three things will happen. One, they will call you and have a brief Bible study. Second, they will weep all of you. The offender and the offendee, the weep both of you. Once they are done, number three, one will kneel down and you pray, lay your hands and pray for him. He will stand up, you, you will kneel down and he will pray for you. I'm serious. Case closed. I told you we are raising a, when we start our schools, that's the way we are going to train the people. I tell you, you can bring your children to our school and go to bed because we will train them, weep out flesh, add the things that our God and produce people of character. We don't just want people who are doing well. We want people who are living well. Hallelujah. Yeah. But right now, what do we have in the body of Christ? I go to minister all the time. And the moment I'm entering, usually there are crowds of people. Everybody looking. Where is he coming? And you see different men of God trying to square their shoulder. Me too. My name is Pastor This. I'm the pastor of this, this revival movement. And I just come and I greet them. Well done, sir. When I come up stage, I start by saying I honor every man, every woman of God, the pastors in this city. We see and we appreciate your contribution to the advancement of the kingdom. And you see all of them squaring up. Now you are talking. You are appreciating us too. And all of a sudden, their heart becomes open to the meeting. People who would never, some of them maybe even talked about me. But just that five minutes, their hearts are open. Listen, listen. People fight you when you try to trivialize their contributions. Never trivialize people's contributions. No matter how little. Don't look at your father and mother one day and say, I've had many people in my life who have, who have built me. I'm happy to say you are one of them. No, they are not one of them. They are your parents. Are we together now? Yeah. People usually fight you when you give them an impression that their contributions are small or worthless. There are ministries I may not really have any much revelation to learn from them, but I can learn leadership. I can learn excellence. There are ministries I can learn prayer. Part of the reasons why God has anointed me so much is because my heart is open over the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ, genuinely. Take away the hatred you have for certain denominations, certain men of God. You know it, I've told you. I never talk against any man of God. I don't care who. Never, you will never hear it from my mouth. I repented years ago and it will never happen. If I ever mention the name of a man of God is to say something commendable because I myself will stand before the white throne and I will be judged. You're my brother, you're my sister. So take me by your hand. Together we will walk until he comes. There's no what that stands between us. Hallelujah. So it's a major mistake. How much do you love people and are able to accommodate? There are people who are talkative. They are noisemakers. All their falling down has not removed it. Don't try to change it. Create an adjustment. Their mouths are like that. You are going to frustrate yourself trying to change it. 
there are others who are cons it would take you praying and fasting to get good morning out of them get used to it are we together now I like this man of God, but I hate his wife. She talks too much. Sorry, she's his wife. She's already married. Accommodated. She plans to be his wife for all the lifespan of that ministry. So if you plan to be a member in that church, get used to all the erratic attitude. Get to the emotionalism. Go past it and focus on what God is doing. Are we together now? Never hate people for holding reservations. Don't look at Muslims moving around and the next thing you just look and say, I hate these people. No, you have been devilish. That's a Luciferian spirit because God sends, he makes the sun to rise on both the evil and the good. The bosses that convey you here after Koinonia, every time I come out, I look at the people, they are greeting me and I greet them. I was telling protocol the other day, I said, make sure that we buy minerals for them and we're happy, we crack jokes. We may have differences in faith and belief and everybody has the responsibility to choose but there are many other things that bind us. How many neighbors never talk face to face because one person is Hare Krishna, one person is, is, is uh, a, a member of this thing and you say, I, I would never, me enter this house and they bring food for you, you say, carry your food and walk back. I know what you did with it. No, you don't do that. Why don't you look away from the differences? I may not believe in deliverance. I may not believe in demons. I may not believe in whether uh, trouser or hair or whatever it is. I may not believe there is heaven. I may not believe there is this, but find a common ground. We are all human beings. Are we together? Never hate people. Listen, you know what hatred is? Hatred is, is a bitter dislike. It's a satanic thing a bitter dislike and usually that hatred comes when people sustain a perspective that is different from yours there are preachers who when they go to preach and they see that there is an interpreter maybe somebody interpreting in Hausa or interpreting another language they put off their angry no. that's why I love Reinhard Bonke He's gone to almost every African continent with their attitudes. I, I watched one of his videos. He went to one African country. Africans, us too. We know how to disgrace ourselves. He went to one African country and before he even settled down, they took coconut and, and then they, 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 they scraped, they created O in the coconut and removed everything and told him to drink the water. And when he was drinking it, they were clapping. I said, is this how to honor a man of God? Don't stretch people beyond their limit. You believe in coconut as a way of welcome and keep it and you are stretching the man too much this guy came all the way from Germany why come and put all of that pressure on him but you notice Reinhard Bonke if he's going to Lagos you will see him wear Agbada and you are wondering Agbada many of our white missionaries do it right you see them struggling to tie this thing women tie they can't do it well but they are doing it anyway and every time you see that it blesses you love do you love the body this looks simple but it may be the reason why many of our prayers are not answered because we do not sustain that love for God and for the body of Christ. These are the contemplations that the Lord himself shared with me. We have extreme hatred for people who sustain a different perspective. We pray in tongues so much, yet there is hatred that is locked up in our mind. We fast so much, yet there is hatred that is locked up in our minds. No. Remember, the Bible says, even faith works by love. Are we together? So I carry that heart of love. I prayed and fasted dry for 10 days. And I carry that attitude of hatred for the body of Christ. And I come and lay my hands on Pastor Femi and the power refuses to move. And you find out that there are few miracles happening in our meetings. I tell you, that's why many men of God have very little miracles and the manifestations of the Spirit. No. Never hate things that are different from your perspective. Don't hate people. Closely related to the subject of hatred, the Lord asked me to talk about this. I don't know why, but He, he put in my heart the issue of temper and anger. Look up. Let me talk about it for five minutes. The Lord began to talk to me. Do you know that what we call temper?
temper. You know what I mean? Hot tempered attitude. Anger. Do you know it's a spirit? Look up, please. Koinonia, are you aware that anger is a spirit? Yeah. How many believers, especially the men, are hot tempered? It's a terrible attitude. When you are involved in any ministry of deliverance, you know that the classic way of identifying the presence of demons in a person is that rage and temper becomes the expression. How many believers and they are going for a meeting and before the meeting, the man beats up his wife, beats her up and then steps into koinonia and is happy and says god is going to move now and you wonder why the power of god does not move you are trying to give a word of knowledge you are just giving nonsense because faith works by love say it after me faith works by love you finish gossiping about a man of god and a family and tearing people down and you stand and you want the glory of god to move around no it does not work like that love Oftentimes you will hear that Jesus was moved with compassion. Listen, if you are a hot-tempered person in this place tonight, if nobody has told you you need help, are we together? I don't care who you are. If you are hot-tempered, humble yourself, you need help. You will never be able to love people when you are hot-tempered. Do you know why? Because people will do things every day that will annoy you. How many days? Every day. Pastors, your wife, your husband, and all of that. It's killing people in the body of Christ. That's where all this revelation of causes and destroying people all of a sudden comes. No. People will offend you. Members will do a lot of childish things, especially if you are a pastor. Anybody who is a pastor or a leader here knows that working with people is a difficult thing because people's ideologies can be very interesting. But do you sustain that ability to be cool and calm? Many marriages are breaking today because of temper, hot temper. The lady hears the man talking about something. Maybe he's talking to his sister. And he says, sweetheart, how are you? And the woman keeps quiet. The man doesn't know what is happening. The next thing he sees um, a knife. She just stabs him and says, I didn't mean to do it. But you just killed your husband. As a true Christian, I don't care what degree of tongues you are praying. When you become temperate, the ability to absorb pain and pressure and yet be calm. Listen, especially for we young people, is one big secret of a healthy marriage. Hot-tempered people are dangerous people. They can do anything. See, closely related to that, every time you are angry, let me tell you how to manage it. Keep quiet. Because when you speak in anger, the devil will take hold of your tongue and you will say things you cannot retrieve back. The Bible says the birds can carry your words. And take it far beyond your reach. If you are angry at my preaching, leave Koinonia. After all, this is other. And then next Sunday, next week, you come and you find out that all the members are angry. They are going to say, No, no, no. I don't mean that. What is the meaning of that? Can't I at least be angry? No. No. Never justify anger and that hot tempered attitude. God is speaking to many of us here. Great people. How many of us have been robbed of the opportunity? We have lost friends because of temper. We have lost relationships because of temper. We have lost destiny helpers because of temper. We have lost anointings and graces because of temper. Tonight God is calling us to love people. Your heart must be very accommodating. Factor it as part of your life that people will annoy you every day. Every day. Hot temper. It's too much in the body of Christ. I watch with shock the way preachers are hot tempered. I've seen men of God talk to their wives in ways I could not believe. A man turns and talks to his wife as if she's a piece of rag. I counseled a case recently. A woman who was thrown away by her husband, a pastor. For two months, she was sleeping outside. Outside doesn't mean another place. Outside, on bare ground. 
she will carry a wrapper in the night and you you will throw her outside two months god is my witness yet that man will come to church on sunday and dance and sing who is deceiving who temper how many pastors beat their wives i mean beat to matching them and say i will kill you how many pastors punish members because of anger kneel down raise your hand i see this i see this is the paid school fees they, they, you, you gave them money to come to people innocently come to your church you punish them and make them look like idiots all these things we are doing let me tell you is very very bad and the lord is not pleased with it temper say in the name of jesus shout it in the name of jesus i receive grace to walk on anger and temper yes you will destroy more people than you know when you are an angry person especially for our sisters do you know the bible says it is better to stay on the rooftop of your house than to live with an angry woman think about that that you carry your mattress on your zinc to stay there rather than living with a woman that is contentious and angry these are the things that short circuit the power of god so we are fasting we are praying but there is temper there's resentment do you know that if i'm angry with tosin and i hate her if god gives me a prophetic word for tosin that word will be corrupted because that word will rub off on my unrenewed my angry mind especially if what god is telling her is a good thing prophesy to her that god will lift her and i'll now say god will lift you but god is saying you should mind the way you talk to men of god now that one is no longer god <laughs> are we together Men of God and churches are trying to make men like them and not like Jesus. While it is true that when you become a leader, you influence people, you must be sure that the person you are following is following Jesus. Not following a denomination, not following a geo, not following a, 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 a priest or pope or whatever. Following Jesus. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Some of you may never appreciate what I'm saying now until you see what these attributes will take out from your life. They will take more. Some of our mothers and people here who are a bit elderly will understand exactly what I'm saying because these little attributes have cheated a lot of people. They have lost opportunities that may never come again saved by the mercy of God. People have lost jobs. They entered interview places and and they try to make them angry on purpose i hope you know that they can make you angry on purpose just job interview you step in and they say what kind of stupid girl are you you step in you can't greet us you can't do everything and they say what the heck is it job and you bounce out and go and continue your suffering you are the one suffering whereas you fail the test I remember one gentleman who was ringing ringing my phone and he sent me a text he said god told me you are my spiritual father i didn't even answer him after like three days he said why are all men of god like this i said look at look at look at the person who is stalking three days 72 hours the same person who is making all that noise temper anger i will kill you we will die in this place i will remove my christianity when i beat you i will put no no don't remove your christianity leave it there it's not a garment you take off and put back listen don't come and be a nice christian in church and then go aside box there are even believers that fight you, you know ba? as in i mean i don't mean words verbal fight real fight when they finish you'll be boiling and they say remember jesus died for you and they're, they're, don't do that if i have a daughter i would never give a, a, my daughter to an angry man i don't care what he has he's a dangerous man men have destroyed children in the womb of women because of anger Temple. this is your house your home we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you. 
God knows from the depth of my heart that I love everybody in Koinonia. I may not know everybody by name, but I love you. You see me greeting people after service. I don't want to know who you are. I don't want to know who your father is, who your mother is. I never treat people and say, you, your father is a senator. You, your mother is, your father is an iron bender. You stand here. You stand here. I don't want to know who is who. I love people genuinely from the depth of my heart. In fact, that's the meaning of my name, the way to love. Do you love people enough to receive the anointing to change them? When I counsel sometimes from morning till night, I am tired and I'm hungry. It's because of love. I think all that I'm, I've taken today is just a drink that I took at the airport. I couldn't even think of saying I'll try to get a meal to eat. Why? Why should I be eating when there are people who are sitting and waiting for the word of God to change them? Why should I say, ah, I, I want to be... No, 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 no. I love you too much. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down, not matches on the sheep, lays down. MOG, you want power. You have fasted, you have prayed. I'm showing you the other sides of the equation. Love. I love God's people. Whenever I shout and quarrel you here, there are times that I'm hard on you in my teachings, but you can look beyond my teachings and know that I'm communicating from a heart of love. I will never open my mouth and speak resentful and hateful words against anybody that God has created. No. 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 You know that song? I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you, I need you to survive. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me, I need you to. Never rejoice at the downfall of others. You will never be anointed that way. Don't celebrate when a man falls. Are we together now? You hear that armed robbers came and robbed the church. You laugh and say, I, I, I knew it. They don't have faith. No. The pain of the body should be your pain. The joy of the body should be your joy. I'm teaching you what we call a corporate life. You must learn to hide your individualism. And let the church rise and be exalted. And sometimes... You may need to constrain your honor and allow the body. When people send a lot of miracles, text messages with many things that have happened, sometimes I send it to the workers. You will never hear me use words like my ministry or my church. If you hear me use that, it, it was a slip of tongue or something that just happened because it is never my church. I'm only a steward. It's never my ministry. Before I was born, God was still at work. If, I, if he tarries af long after I'm gone, I will only be one of many that has brought my contribution. I will never look down on the body of Christ. I will never look down on any man that is made in the image of God. I have seen people who look like nothing and within one, two, three years, God raised them. Some of us were like that. If we were to follow based on the standards of men, some of us would probably not be able to enter some of the places we are entering right now. But God has the ability to see the motif of men's heart. That's why many of us who think we are qualified never receive anything. And there are others who approach God and we say, Lord, if there is any vessel you are looking for, find one in me. I never forget where he's brought me from. I never forget what he's doing in my life. I love him with my life and I love his word and I love the body of Christ. Everyone say after me, I love the body of Christ. I love God's creation. Yes. Do this little thing, brothers and sisters, and you will see doors open. I know many of you will be expecting me to say something great and something charismatic. Never trivialize what I am teaching you right now. Not only will it give you character, it will sustain your open heavens. As a pastor, people never become loyal to you until they discern that you love them. Many pastors hate their members. They only use their members. They use their members. 
there was a time I rebuked the protocol department. I said, why did you withdraw security? They said, ah, there is peace and calm. I told them, I said, peace or no peace, make sure that we have adequate securities at all times, not just during Koinonia, but any activity, let there be correspondences with security because I love God's people too much. God brought these people as a trust. We must be able to take care of them. You don't want to imagine how much we spend every week transporting buses, the chairs and the rest. And the protocol department know they will never meet me once and say, are we not spending too much? It is never too much for the people that God is going to raise to become mighty people. It is never too much. Love. Love. There remained these three. Faith, hope, and love. But the Bible says the greatest is love. Let me show you one scripture as we round up. One scripture that has blessed me so, so much. 1 John 4 verse 16. Please media, give us 1 John 4 verse 16. These words came very strong upon my heart. And I pray that it will be strong upon your heart the same way it came upon my heart. Go ahead and read. Let's read together. One, two, read. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. Listen. He said God is what? He didn't say God has love. He didn't say God loves he said God is love and then this is what he says he says he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him not he that prays in tongues he that dwells in love your life becomes like a magnet when the love of Christ is at work in you listen there are people on this earth when you stand close to them you literally feel the love of Jesus like a river flowing you know there is nothing you do that will drive them away from you they love you may god make you such a person in the name of jesus christ this is one big secret of the anointing of the spirit upon my life every time i come for koinonia and i sit down here i watch the protocol department doing their thing the ushers doing their thing and the love of god falls upon my heart for them as i stand and see the way they are struggling to make sure things work i never come here morning or afternoon to supervise what they are doing sometimes as early as eight o'clock in the morning they are already working doing everything and i look at them every worker in koinonia they know that i love them with my life not just because we, we put dinners for them. I love them with me. I will give my life for the workers. I will. And I mean it with, 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 with no words. I will never watch somebody come around me who is hungry. If you know me very well and you are close to me, after greeting you, I ask you, what have you eaten? And you try to say, no, no. I say, what have you eaten? If it is 500 naira that I have, we will share it. Listen, brothers and sisters. When the heart of love is at work in you, power will never be far from you. Never. Never be far from you. God will be able to bring members. God will be able to bring children. God will bring people that you will build. He that dwells in love is very important. It's not enough to pursue anointing. It's not enough to pursue lifting and fame. You must love people. Love overrides prayer. Love overrides fasting. First Corinthians 13. I just feel we should round up there. First Corinthians 13 as we round up. We are going to examine ourselves and our love lives. As far as God is concerned. God is doing a circumcision in our hearts tonight. For though I speak with the tongues of men, look up everyone, and the tongues of angels, there is no man alive who has entered this spiritual dimension where you can flow in the tongues of men and the tongues of angels. And the Bible says, even if you get to that realm, it says, and have not love. Can we have a version that says love if there is? It says, I am become as what? A sounding brass or a tinkling symbol in other words if i become such a man of god that i can speak both in the tongues of men right i am nothing 
Verse 2. Let's hurry up, media. Please help us. Verse 2. And if I have prophetic powers, is that not what we are looking for? We are looking for it passionately. Chasing every man of God with handkerchief and, and oil. Somebody met me in a meeting and just he just opened it and said, man of God, breathe on this oil. I mean, I just said, God bless it. It is done. He just closed it. I said, you see the kind of thing we are talking about. If I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose. It says, and I understand all secret truths. Come on now. This is the realm of Rema. Insights that we are looking for. The Bible says, even if you rise to that point and you possess the mysteries and possess all knowledge, then it says, if I have sufficient faith, no one on earth I know has gotten to that dimension so that you can remove mountains but have not love the bible says i am what on earth if i raise 10 wheelchairs my name will be on poster everywhere what will they call me great man of god tomorrow we are going for a crusade right and there will be all kinds of miracles in that crusade i'm sure the people are excited right now as i was passing coming i saw one small poster and i saw my face there I just nodded my head. And we, and, I mean, we just passed. I, I saw the poster, you know. It's in Barnawa. The crusade is in Barnawa tomorrow. Barnawa for Christ's crusade. And while we were coming, I saw somewhere they just put my face. I said, somebody will see this now and say, ah, this man of God. While they are laughing and clapping, this is what God is saying. He says, if I have all this power to raise wheelchairs and prophesy and teach mysteries, and I have not love... Based on men's standard, I'm a great person. They will give me money. They will sow into my life. They will deceive all these deceitful things that happen. But the Bible says, I am nothing. Empty, zero, useless. Verse 3. Even if I dole out all that I have, I dish out the giving dimension now. Even if I give out everything I have to the poor in providing food and if I surrender my body to be burned or in order that I may glory but I have not love. It says I gain what? Nothing. Do you know what it means to give yourself to die? How many people have we rejoiced and said they died for others? When we get to heaven you will see that their reward may be small for some of them. Love is a big deal to God. Love endures long. Now give us King James. We're ready to be kings. Give us King James. Charity does what? Suffers long. The word long suffering, there's the word patience. Now, everywhere as I read on, wherever the word charity is, except your name is charity, I want you to put your name there. Ready? We'll just read it. One, two, read. Joshua Selman suffers long and is kind. Joshua Selman envies not. Read it, you are reading it. Joshua Selman vaunted not itself and is not puffed up. Stop. Is that true about you? Is that true that you are patient? Are you a patient person? Is that true about you that you are kind? Is it true? Of, I know you pray in tongues. I know you are a miracle worker. You are an apostle. You are a prophet. Is it true that you do not envy? Oh, how many believers die in envy? It's not puffed up. You don't lift up yourself. Trying to show that you are better than others. Because of whatever privileges you have. Next verse. We are rounding up. He says it does not behave itself unseemingly and then love seeketh not her own the meaning of that is that you prioritize people and their needs even above yourself in other words you are not selfish and self-centered is that true is that really true about us aha here is the point it's not easily angered or provoked thinketh no evil when was the last time you saw people and you did not think negative about them. To look at a lady and say, this lady looks like a prostitute. What of this lady looks like the kind of vessel God will use? Says, does not think evil. Verse 6. 
rejoice not in iniquity. So you see, living in iniquity is also a sign that the love of God is not in you. Because when you love him, you will love to please him. When you love your fellow man, you will not come and destroy your fellow man and do all these kinds of things. But rejoice it in the truth. Seven. It bearet all things. Endurance. There are times that for the sake of the love you have for people, you will endure a lot of things. It believed all things. It hoped all things. It endured all things. Eight. It says love never fails. Everyone say it after me. Love never fails. He says, but whether there be prophecies, they shall what? That means even the prophetic realm has errors and limitations. He says, whether there be tongues, utterances, communications, the Bible says they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, rema, revelation, he says they shall vanish away. Verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. 10. We are reading down to 13 or 14. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. 11. When I was a child, void of love, I proved it by speaking like a child. I understood like a child and I taught like a child. Tonight's teaching is making us become mature people. It says, now that I am a man, I am matured. I put away what? Childish things. That means something about your speaking must change after tonight's meeting. Something about your understanding must change after tonight's meeting. Something about your thought life must change your action. It says, for now we see through a glass. Go to verse 13, please. 13. And now abided what? Hope. Faith. Hope. And love, these three, it says, but the greatest is love. What is the greatest? The greatest, brothers and sisters, is not building a ministry. The greatest is not becoming a man of God. The greatest is not becoming a custodian of kingdom mysteries and revelation. The greatest is not just having power and anointing. No, the universal set. At the end of my life, I want this to be said about me, that I love God with all my heart. I served him with all my heart and that I loved humanity with my all and my heart. I don't want no credit to my name that I built houses and bought cars and um, what happened? I traveled abroad. I own jets. I own all those things. Thank God for them. But I sincerely do not want all of these things added because they are all useless. I have learned early in life the vanity of anything that is outside love. When we get to heaven, they are not going to ask how many wheelchairs were raised. They are not going to ask how many suits you wore. They are not going to ask how many Versace you bought. They are not going to ask how many first class flights you entered. All that matters when you stand before him is love and if the love of God is not found in you this is scary but let me tell you the truth you are going to hell you are going to hell without the love of God for sure so we are going to pray tonight very briefly rise up on your feet in one minute before we pray please everyone rise if you can if you can please rise inside and outside I just want you to close your eyes for one minute and reflect on what I've taught tonight. Love. The Bible says God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God. I want you to reflect in one minute how much the love of God has dried away from your heart and how much your love for the body of Christ has been questionable. I want you to think of how your life has contributed to destroying the life of others, if in any way it has. Or the way your life has contributed in destroying churches, ministries, men of God, the body of Christ. Think of how you have brought denominational barriers and destroyed people's faith. 
think of how you have castigated pastors and made people not to listen to them. It's time for change. I know you're looking for power. I know you're looking for anointing. I know you're looking for money. You're looking for increase. We all are searching for these things. But I'm showing you the way. God is speaking to us. Some of us here, imagine how many relationships you have destroyed because of lack of love. Imagine people who would have been married now but because you do not sustain the love of Christ, you destroy best friends. Imagine destinies you have turned around and aborted. Some of you have even made marriages to be divorced. You have made pastors to hate other pastors. You have carried news that are not newsworthy. You have made ministries to fight themselves. If you want to see the glory of God upon your life, the love must be at work. Imagine how many times you have held unforgiveness in your heart against people. Your husband, your wife, your brother, your child, fellow believers. It's time to let go. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray and say, Lord, let it go. I release it tonight in the name of Jesus. All the unforgiveness, the bitterness, the hurt, I release it and let it go tonight in the name of Jesus go ahead and pray please we are praying very seriously talk to the Lord say Lord never will I be an enemy of the advancement of your kingdom never will I be the reason why someone's destiny will be jeopardized never will I be the reason why the body of Christ will crumble I repent of ignorance I repent of childishness the Bible calls love the bond of perfectness. That's why I called it the mystery of perfection. This is the ancient mystery that makes men perfect, mature. Lift your voice and pray and open up your heart before God. Lord, I've fought people who do not agree my, with my Christian perspectives. I've fought men of God and ministries. I've fought people who are gifts from God to me, who would have changed my life. But I've resented them because of their ideologies. I have hated people of other religions. I have hated people who sustain a different perspective to life than my own. Anybody who is not like me becomes my enemy. I repent tonight in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Walk upon my heart. Walk upon my heart. Change my heart. Change my heart. No more hatred. Lift your voice and rebuke the spirit of hatred. It's a spirit. Hatred is a choice. You can choose to love and you can choose to hate. If there are people you hate and you hold on in your heart, I'd like you to begin to release them right now. I release my mother. I release my father. I release that pastor. I release my church. I release this denomination. I release my wife and my husband. Hatred is a choice. Love is a choice. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points very quickly. We are going to pray against anger. And that hot tempered attitude. Please listen. If you are here and you know you are suffering from anger. You are not going to come out. But I want you to be honest and pray and say lord i'm tired of this thing is destroying my life is destroying valuable relationships don't pretend and say i'm a this and that open your mouth and pray temper sisters make sure you pray brothers make sure you pray the bible says do not let the sun go down while you are still angry it says, don't give the devil a foothold. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I choose to be joyful. I choose to be a happy person. Regardless of circumstances. Are you praying tonight? I cause the spirit of anger from my life. I cause the spirit of anger from my life. I cause the spirit of resentment and cynicism and unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred i cause the spirit of anger that hot tempered attitude
that hurts others whether with words or actions or thoughts pray it out of your life pray it out of your life I'm a changed person tonight I make up my mind for change I make up my mind for change in the name of the Lord Jesus I want my life to host the glory of God I want to be a genuine career of his power and his glory and I lay aside the weight and the encumbrances that rob me from carrying the glory of God hallelujah last prayer point let's hold hands all over this building hold the hands of someone I'd like you to pray for yourself and pray for koinonia passionately from your heart lift up your voice and say Lord like a mantle may your love come upon everyone and upon the house go ahead and pray Lord a baptism of love in every department among the leaders among the executives pray for love pray for me pray for love let the love of God that bond of perfectness be at work in my brother and my sister now pray for the person whose hands you are holding pray you don't need to know them you don't need to know their tribe you don't need to know where they are coming from there's one thing that binds us all together that we love the Lord some of them may be struggling in sin but pray for them you love them some of them may be wounded soldiers they may have made mistakes they may have messed up in different areas but you must pray for love pray for your family members many of them may not deserve your love but I like you to pray and say Lord the love of God in my heart the love of God across my neighbor hallelujah hallelujah please hold hands we're praying i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to it is his will that every need be supplied Never make your life of today. Never make your life an accommodation. Never make your life an accommodation for hatred and bitterness. Anybody that comes into your life and is trying to sow the seed of bitterness, drive them far from your life. Don't anybody that comes and is gossiping about, drive them far. I never allow these kinds of environments. Because when the love of God is perfect, then you'll find out that sickness will leave you. For as long as those things are there, sickness can hold on to you. Failure can hold on to you. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. Many of us, we keep getting sick and sick. We keep getting oppressed. Because when Satan looks at you, there's something in your life that looks like him. But when love is perfected in you, believe me, believe me, you conquer death. When love is perfected, you conquer sickness. When love is perfected, you conquer failure. When love is perfected, you conquer limitation. When love is perfected, your health is preserved. There's no stress. There's no, there's no blood disease as a result of any stress. You live a very happy life by choice. A happy life by choice. Hallelujah. Before I pray for us very quickly, still holding hands, there are people here tonight You've heard me teach on love and there are many of us the Lord is talking to you and first and foremost you've not even established your love for Jesus Christ you may be a Christian you may be inside outside maybe you once fell in love with God but for some reason you have derailed you know you have derailed and there are people who have never made that decision every time you hear preachers making an altar call like this you scorn them you think they are wasting their time the Lord Jesus is giving you a chance tonight. Wherever you are, 
please i'd like you to leave that hand of your neighbor and make your way to the front we have just one or two minutes for this wherever you are make your way to the front right now god bless you people are coming celebrate them outside inside god bless you it's time to receive the greatest love god bless you and there are people who have done a lot of things in their lives and they are asking can god take me back i want you to know that god will take you the way you are and change you make your way to the front we don't care what you have done or not done jesus said he who has no sin should first cast the stone make your way to the front two minutes please god bless you jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of you before my father let this be a new beginning win that war in your heart tonight win that war over destiny tonight god bless you make way for them hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out we love you everybody at one time or the other has had to make this decision god bless you my dear join them bless you my brother if you're still thinking about it just rush out quickly i want to lead you to this prayer some of you are crying don't be ashamed it's a decision that will change your life. Lift your right hand. And I want you to say this after me from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Let this be. I want you to know that Jesus is in this place. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word tonight. And I declare that I love you with all my heart. I ask you to forgive me. I've lived my life the way I want now I hand over that life to you. Take that life and use it for your glory. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from today, I'm a changed person. My past is gone. My past is over. A fresh start begins for me today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now keep those hands lifted as I pray for you, Father. You brought these ones to change them and bless them and we thank you. Some of them have gone through things we cannot imagine. I pray that tonight will be a fresh start for them. Some of them are giving their lives to Jesus for the first time. Others are rededicating their lives. May they never go back to their lifestyles again. Give them a new lifestyle in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that God will make you mighty men and women. I pray that you will be completely changed from today, forward ever and backward never. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please follow the gentleman waving his hand. Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Bless him for tonight. And say, Holy Spirit, break every wall. Every wall of limitation. Break every wall down. In the name of Jesus, break every wall down. Are you praying from the depth of your heart? Break every wall down. Break every limitation in my life down. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Break every wall down in the name of Jesus. Outside, are you praying? Thank you, Jesus. hallelujah hallelujah jesus we are gathered before you tonight we're here because we believe in you we're here because we trust you we're here because we want to know you we're here because you are our helper this is the place of strength this is the place of wisdom this is the place of power this is a place of miracles. This is a place of encounters. This is a place of transformation. So Lord, we thank you. 
For you are bigger than what we say. You are better than what we say. You are bigger than what we say. You are bigger than what we say. Hallelujah. Bless our hearts tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Walk to 10 people, greet them, tell them it's good to see you. And then back to your seat. There is a sweet anointing in There is a still in the atmosphere Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary, God is here. That's already a prophetic word for someone tonight. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary. God is here. For in the sanctuary. God is here. For in the sanctuary. God, you are here and we thank you. Change our lives tonight in the name of Jesus. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have a very serious word for us tonight. It's, it's actually an explanation where to start a new series but the spirit of God would not let me start a new series there is a key that I taught in this place that the Lord wants me to teach it again because we need to understand it again and again the Holy Spirit kept pressing on my spirit that we ought to understand some mysteries must be taught again and again and again until our spirits pick them. Are we together? The end of revelation is that we apply these truths and they produce results in our lives. And so I'm going to be challenging us on that thought and then we will pray. One of the greatest prayers you can pray as a believer is that the eyes of your understanding truly be enlightened. Are we together? The eyes of your understanding is not intelligence. The eyes of your understanding is not intellect. The eyes of your understanding is not philosophical knowledge. The eyes of your understanding is access to the mysteries of the spirit alongside their operation. You can know that these mysteries exist. You see, revelation is not knowing what God has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. Knowing what God has said is not revelation. When you know how to make it work in your life, it told Job, knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth. 
Amen. It's important that when we come into God's presence, we listen. You will think that when people come into God's presence like this, the fact that you are looking at me, it doesn't mean you are listening. Are we together? People can be distracted. People can be careless. Some can be looking with their eyes open, but they are sleeping. Are we together? All kinds of things happen. It was Jesus himself that told us what happened to seeds. Some fall by the wayside. Correct seed, correct sower. Some fall by the wayside. Some fall in the midst of thorns. Some fall on a rocky ground. Even among the good soils, three kinds of results. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. May you be 100-fold tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. A day will come in your life where you would have sufficiently gained access to the mysteries of the kingdom alongside the keys that release their power. And let me tell you, when that time comes, you will be nothing short of a wonder. Everybody around you will know that the finger of God is upon your life. We make impact in this world through mysteries. We make impact in this world not through desire. It takes more than desire to make true impact for the kingdom. I'll share a thought with us and then we'll walk on a scripture and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. I shared with us here, for those of us who were not there, please listen attentively. And by the way, those following us online, we love you, we honor you, you are part of us. That there are three platforms upon which impact is established. Please listen. When God is ready to reveal himself to a man, when God is ready to do business with a man upon the earth, there are only three platforms as revealed from scripture upon which that man will access capacity to make impact platform number one encounters don't forget this they are not cheap they are not basic at all encounters the first platform that grants a man access to walk with God is encounter Everybody say encounter. Encounters are very, very important because they birth spiritual realities in our spirits. By encounters, I don't just mean visionary encounters. Even encounters through the word. An experience that makes God real to you. An experience that makes a dimension of God real to you. It could be aided through a vision it could be aided through a supernatural experience but regardless of what platform it comes through any experience capable of making a dimension of god become real to you is called an encounter true encounters produce conviction not memory conviction a true encounter listen it doesn't just leave you with a memory it produces conviction if you tell me you've had an encounter with a dimension of God, I will know. I don't care whether you claim you had a vision or a scripture opened up to you. When it is opened up to you, the first time that you had an encounter is unusual conviction. It translates to faith. If God gives you an encounter of his healing power, it produces conviction. If God gives you an encounter of a dimension of spiritual reality, it must come with conviction. Say conviction. There are so many people in the body of Christ who are not convicted about the things they teach. It's one thing to teach from a theological standpoint, and that's important. It's one thing to teach from a sociological standpoint, but it's one thing to teach from a depth of conviction. It's not by shouting. It's not the volume of your voice. It's not the, the repetition of your grammar. Conviction is a realm where your speaking, your listeners know that the things you are saying are true with you. 
say encounters we must crave for encounters you know people who don't really understand this thing think that all we are advocating is that people begin to have out of body experiences and they begin to propose as though you are telling people to not pay attention to the word of god to now begin to contend for angelic encounters heavenly encounters as above the word of god no the bible says god appeared um to samuel in shiloh by his word are we together he appeared by his word so an encounter doesn't necessarily mean until you see an angel and he says promise i was sent from heaven to you that from today you take the healing power of god to the nations and then every time you stand you say i remember what the angel said yes that's an encounter but there are men like Reinhard Bonke who had encounters. They never had any visionary experience. When you listen to Reinhard Bonke's story, he will tell you that a day came, they brought in a great man of God to preach. The man preached the first day and told all the sick people to come by the second day. And the morning of the second day, Reinhard Bonke was excited because they were going to wheel all kinds of sick people. In Africa, if you tell people to bring the sick, they are obedient. They will bring the sick. Whether they are related to them or not, they will. That sense of nationhood will kick in. They will drag every sick person. And so they brought those people. And the preacher told Renhard Bonke, he said, The Lord told me to pack up my things and get out of this place. You will preach and you will heal. Renhard Bonke said, No, 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 no. You can't be playing. I mean, you are the great man of God. I'm only here to encourage you. And he said, I'm sorry, I have to be on my way. Reinhard Bonke said he cried and cried because his ministry was about to be shredded into pieces. And then all of a sudden, that's an encounter. The word of the Lord comes. You don't read it, it comes. In the fifth day of the fifth month of this, the word of the Lord came. There's the one you try to get, but the one that comes is what produces encounter. And Reinhard Bonke just looked and said, Lord, I will go and do the preaching and you will do the healing and that was it a man who has produced a ministry that has liberated africa encounters you can be reading a scripture you can be reading john 3 16 but one day the word of the lord will come to you for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him when that encounter comes you can sing songs like yes jesus loves me you sang it in sunday school it was not an encounter it was a recitation but when it comes as an encounter you will sing that song and you are crying and somebody looks at you and says ah, ah you are deeper than this and he said that's the point it has not come to you but it came to me Are we together? Encounters. My life is a testimony of encounters. I can point to you exact periods in my life where certain things happen that birthed certain convictions that have been responsible for releasing certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities. May God give us encounters. The meeting is called Koinonia and the first thing you should get is an encounter. If you are a prayer leader without an encounter, a pastor without an encounter, an apostle, a prophet, whatever you call yourself, a time will come, your lack of assurance will become evident to those you are leading. Are we together? It's not by bold face. Bold face is not encounter. I know God will show up. Please. Encounters produce convictions unto death. But I know whom I have believed and i am persuaded say god give me encounters say it again god give me encounters you believe god has called you into the ministry of kingdom wealth but you are not sure you don't have encounters so you are hoping you will be rich to prove to people that you were called into the ministry of kingdom financing you lack encounters listen an encounter makes your conviction as your primary evidence not physical results your conviction becomes your primary evidence so god can call you to the nations 
as at the time you are speaking the only other listener is your wife but you still say God called me to the nations I love men of convictions conviction conviction we, we live in a result driven a carnal result driven generation where until you produce physical results that can be seen people oftentimes will not believe you so you will need encounters let me tell you so that when things do not happen the way you want you are still left with your encounter job said though he slay me yet will i trust him i know him the god in the mountain is still god in the valley let me tell you why many people gas out many pastors many preachers i've seen a lot of preachers say god sent me to so 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 city when the city became too hot and whipped them they left quietly encounters give you stamina encounters give you stamina encounters give you stamina he said if you turn aside in the day of battle he said your strength is small one guy came and met me one time and he said god has called him into the apostolic ministry i said congratulations a few months later it became too hot for him and he came back he said i get it now i'm an evangelist i said go. i told him i said go for a retreat a retreat that produces an encounter because he thought it's just in a name usually when it becomes too hot people change persecution <laughs> we think the name will give you access for preaching fast so you say i am prophet a and b and c and then the heavy controversy that lands on your head you quietly remove it and say i am pastor joshua selman <laughs> say encounters may God give us encounters Amen. one big secret in my life is that God used encounters to convince me of my call solid encounters both visionary encounters word encounters prophetic encounters that's why no matter what anybody says or does I will never even pray about it that's how certain I am when you try to explain things to people you don't have conviction enough please talk to someone by your side and say get conviction get conviction strong conviction are we together strong conviction we doubt and we fall by the wayside and we make a mess of and you know it's a terrible thing to brag so much before people and then you are now forced to defend your advocacy but the encounter that will sponsor your confidence is not there if i believe god has called me to carry the healing anointing and there are 100 wheelchairs and i pray for them and nobody gets healed i tell them may god bless you and uh, have a nice day and i'll go to sleep and someone says but man of god ah it's either you are backsliding or something has happened i will go back and challenge myself to rise greater but i'll not go back saying god if it's that i didn't hear you well can you explain to me again no we're laughing but i'm, I'm trusting that god is speaking to us encounters do you know that the world follows men of conviction if i am a thief today there is, a, there is a certainty about my stealing that will force you to say, look, this guy knows what he's doing. He's worth hearing. Terrorists are men of encounter and conviction. They have met spirits. The spirits told them certain things. So while the government is trying to advise them and say, why don't you become nice social beings? They say, all of you are confused and we are out to kill you and bomb you. And you say, are you sure you will do this? Yes. What of your life? What of your wife and your family? And they say, to hell with them. Conviction from an encounter. What encounter do you have that sponsors your confidence? Oh, I saw God give a Jimmy this. It's not enough reason. You must have a personal encounter. 
we lack this a lot i'm taking out time to help you understand this we lack this a lot in the body of christ you can borrow joshua selman's revelation listen to one koinonia message and just write everything out and preach in a conference and say god said there is this and that and that but you know there is a way people look through you and they see that even you as you are preaching you are just saying lord i hope i'm right i'm about to pray joshua selman prayed after that message and now i'm about to pray after my own then you stand and speak and say i see angels everywhere whether or not you are seeing them because you thought i was lying so now you say i see angels overflow are you ready say yes no encounter that's how preachers disgrace themselves convention after convention till everybody in your circle stops bringing you for meetings because you have a track record of copying with no results someone can guide you but the ultimate journey is that you meet christ you meet him not just theologically but you have an encounter say amen, amen. it's good to know the god of joshua selman but stay until that god becomes your god the people told the woman the the samaritan woman he said we believe you now not just because you told us we have seen him for ourselves you came and introduced us but ah talking with him he did something to us in the name of jesus may god give us encounters over your business over your life over your family so that when you go and you look at your cgpa and you look at it from 4.5 god forbid but you drop to 3.5 and you see three carryovers you don't suddenly say ah and god said i'll be a leader god you must come and you see some prayers are, are revelations of the doubts you've been nursing for many years so what you have feared secretly now comes upon you and you say god but you told me now you told me eh? you told me that this brother will marry me this one that he has done introduction what are you saying don't make noise until you have the burning bush experience we brag too much on hearsay i watch preachers talk sometimes and i'm saying be careful though jesus is lord but his lordship is exercised with wisdom and understanding if you are not healed in this meeting except i'm not called hey at the end of the meeting only two people are healed encounters encounters i crave for them i create the atmosphere for them i desire them in my life encounters it's not about reading the bible genesis to revelation it's not about quoting scripture as important as it is it's not about a display of greek and hebrew words encounters produce convictions convictions produce faith faith moves mountains it's not what you do is the conviction behind what you do number two the second platform upon which men do business with god is a comprehension or access to the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom an encounter is one you meet a person in an encounter but you must comprehend the principles of the kingdom is god helping us tonight your knowledge of the principles the working knowledge of the principles of the word of god is another platform for you to activate a life and a destiny of impact so what principles do you know it says and i will give you the keys right and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven king james says whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven amplified says whatever you allow whatever you disallow the power to release realities and the power to close doors is called the key of david 
your life there is a dimension of impact in your life hear me brothers and sisters that is a product of the mysteries that you know this is what i define as dominion you've heard me say it again and again dominion is not an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom we've spent this year as much as many other years dissecting these mysteries under the teaching secrets of the kingdom the series get it secrets of the kingdom right i taught you six mysteries that control mighty dramatic manifestations upon the earth mystery number one i taught you is the law of surrender the law of surrender that this is the mystery that holds the key to unusual amounts of unction upon the lives of people complete surrender complete surrender mystery number two is the power of a transformed mind for as he thinketh in his heart right so he's so he is i told you realities are first formed in the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical realm so you never try to change anything by physically trying to alter it you alter it from the realm of the spirit and it changes mystery number three is the law of competence seest thou a man diligent in his business he says he shall not stand before mean men he shall stand before kings are we together we we did this very very mystery number four i explained to you the secret of coming out of situations that are about to swallow you in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path that's what the bible says he said trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding a time must come in a man's life where you face challenges that are bigger than your current level of exposure you don't know anything about that challenge nor how to go out at that time the key is to acknowledge him he says in all thy ways acknowledge him praise is a weapon for acknowledgement so as you begin to acknowledge him there is a promise attached he said he will make straight your path mystery number five is the mystery i call it the irrefutable mystery of destiny helpers men and women anointed commanded instructed to appear in your destiny and take you to the next level i'm doing a recap it, it, please i don't know how to plead with you believe what i'm teaching you and understand it and you will change your life there are three kinds of destiny helpers i shared with us the other time number one they are called divine connectors they do not have the ability to help you but they can link you to where your help is divine connectors number two men of influence they have the capacity both the economic power both the governmental power right the intellectual prowess to endorse you and open up doors for you an example of such a person is joseph of arimathea a man who through his influence jesus was ordered to come down from the cross and buried in a tomb you need them and then number three faithful men the third kind of destiny helpers faithful men 400 of these men came to david david was running he was a failure he was broke he was on his way ministry had packed up but 400 men came and they entered a covenant with themselves to be loyal to him until he became king and then the last mystery which in my opinion is the most powerful maybe secondary to only an encounter is the law of honor Hebrews 7 7 and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the greater I told you that there is a system in the body of Christ nobody blesses himself you cannot lift yourself to a new dimension are we together no matter how anointed you are no matter how great you are at every point in your life there are people below you trusting God for your grace to lift them there are people above you there are those who already represent what your future aspirations are 
and there are people who you represent their future aspiration the recognition of that is the key to living where you are to the next level you ignore the law of honor you will pay for it dearly you ignore the law of honor you will pay for it dearly there are human beings that represent systems the recognition of what they represent alongside the possibilities god has opened unto them will bring you into their realm of reality honor is the key to access every time a door closes over your life this honor closed it and every time a door opens over you honor opened it so there are many other mysteries that we have to learn i can teach you mystery upon mystery upon mystery one of it is he that wants friends must first show himself friendly now you read these things as verses until god opens your eyes then you will see the reason why many people never have the gift of men because they are not friendly to be friendly does not mean to be a clown to be friendly means to be hospitable are we together it says that you neglect not being hospitable for in it many have entertained angels unaware it was through hospitality sarah trapped the angels and they gave a revelation about the inevitable doom of sodom and gomorrah and it was on the strength of that hospitality that abraham was given access to that mystery and with it he rescued lot praise the lord the third platform upon which men receive from god and create lives of notable impact in the earth is covenant connection covenant connection covenant connection may god make us believe what i'm sharing may god make us believe it may god make us believe it in the name of jesus christ covenant connection the bible speaking about men and describing the nature and the character of their success says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sit in the sin the seat of the scornful he says but his delight what is in the law of the lord and on that law he meditates day and night then he says he shall be this is how his success will be in the similitude of that of a tree if the bible says you shall be like something study that thing it says the success of a believer will be like that of a tree how does a tree rise number one it is planted from the stem that rises branches begin to come all branches do not move in the same direction but regardless of their direction the strength of the branches are determined by the strength of the vine that they are connected to they may face different directions and the trees can grow so tall taller than buildings and the trees can stand for years and decades branches fall and rise they are pruned and they come again but the stem connected to the root remains intact any branch that cuts itself outside of the vine dies you don't water the branches you water the roots and it has a system are we together trying to pour water on leaves is a waste of time a system so he said he shall be like a tree listen our personal spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant please you have to understand this our personal work with God is based on relationship however kingdom advancement is based on covenants not the covenant of Moses not the covenant of the New Testament I'm not talking old and new covenant a covenant is a system through which God guarantees a continuity of his program now listen listen look up please let me teach you this get it get it in the name of Jesus Christ the way the kingdom works is through the principle of covenant and alignment please listen 
So what happens is that every dispensation has a dimension of spiritual realities that they should experience. Which is part of the ongoing unfolding of the multifaceted dimension of God. Are we together? So every dispensation has a dimension of God earmarked for them to experience. But the nature and the character of that revelation is such that when God wants to come in in a dimension to a territory and a dispensation, his first assignment is to find a man. Say a man. When he finds a man, he enters a personal covenant with that man. That personal covenant becomes the platform upon which that dimension of God is revealed to the dispensation. No other person will access that dimension in that dispensation out of alignment to the person in covenant with God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. God will not reveal the same thing to everybody. He will reveal the same thing to one person and direct every other person who wants to experience that part of him to align with the covenant that he has had upon that man or upon that system. Are we together? The yardstick that he uses to bring men to that experience is called an election of grace. It has nothing to do necessarily with their personal yieldedness. It is part of his sovereignty and his predeterminate counsel. So God calls men. Every time you are talking about redemption, the journey of redemption and the doctrine of Christ starts from Abraham, not Noah, not Adam. Are we together? Whether it's Christianity, whatever kind of religion, the moment they are communicating the doctrine of Christ, the genesis of the blueprint of the doctrine of Christ starts from Abraham. God called one man to come out of a place called Or of the Chaldeans, Genesis chapter 12. Right? He wanted to use his father, Terah, but something happened. And he, the, the, you know, the baton passed on to Abraham and he called Abraham an idol worshiper out of all of the Chaldeans and he called him and he said look I am calling you out come out of your father's house your kindred and all of that and I will do certain things with you and Abraham obeyed him there are so many people in the Bible that represents God's covenant point there are portals that open their dispensation and their generations to certain dimensions of God that law did not die with the coming and the going of Jesus Christ. There are still men today that represent new dimensions of God or continuity of his program. Hmm. Are we together? Alongside your encounter, alongside your comprehension of the laws of the spirit, your covenant connection to men or systems that represent the continuity of God in that dimension but this is where Satan cheats a lot of people please listen to me carefully this is something else I'm talking about but we need to understand this God asked me to reiterate these things you know why we honor men we honor men for many reasons. Number one is the anointing they carry. Number two, the sacrifice that they have with God that has brought certain levels of possibilities in their life. Number three is the spiritual system that they represent. When David wanted permission to fight Goliath, do you know the question Saul asked? He said, whose son is this? In other words, I want to know the tribe he came from so that I know whether this can be possible. This boy is too young. I'm a king. But I need to know where he's coming from. So we can trace the history of the spiritual deposits God left with that tribe. And when they found out that David was of the Benjamites, he said, go and fight. David came to him and he said, Goliath, I know you think I'm a small boy. But there is a tribe standing before you, not a person. Watch what happens to you now. Goliath said, am I a dog? David said, we will we'll see who, who is the dog. I have seen people in my life who never become billionaires but they never lack whether they pray or not even when they are not tithing it's a covenant there is something they are connected to whether they know it or not that affords them those spiritual possibilities
Open our eyes, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I have seen pastors who when they stand to teach, you will almost sleep. But when they call upon the God of heaven, he shows up. It's not personal encounter. In fact, many of them may have a lot of character defaults. And while you are talking about their character, it's like God owes them his presence. They call him and he must show up. There is a covenant he respects. He says, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my mouth. Are we together? So some of our people, although they were in the village with witchcraft, they had 16 children, one woman, 16 children. And yet, after 16 children, the woman is still standing, her stomach is still as flat as an arrow. You wonder whether the children grew in a basket. It's a covenant. Brothers and sisters, it's not about knowing what drug to take. Some things are spiritual. When they are spiritual, they show and you see it. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Hmm. Oh, you better believe it. So that when you look at a man, you know that not every result you see was initiated by his personal altar. When you know that, there will be no room for pride when God begins to give you results. Because you will know that certain dimensions of your result are purely an issue of alignment. Purely an issue of what? Alignment. Spiritual alignment. There was a time, for instance, in living faith, it still happens, where there were strange testimonies, 2005, 2006, creative, those ones were, it's what the Bible calls the walking of miracles, not testimonies, where a man would tell you, I was a cleaner, and by Sunday, the owner of the company said he's leaving Nigeria, and they made me a CEO. Strange testimonies. So you see somebody who drag himself and he's sleeping while they are preaching. Sleeping. They say in Jesus' name, he never says amen. He's even angry. But something still came on him. With the anger, he turns and he leaves and goes back and the landlord says, you are staying five years in this house. The rent is, is free. And the man says, I don't understand what is happening to me. Two weeks later, they call him and say, there is a job we want to give you. And he says, I don't understand. There is a covenant. When God looks at you, he sees the covenant. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. If you know this thing I'm teaching you, you can, you can make, it's not a license to sin. You can make the worst blunder on earth. Quarter to shame. The covenant kicks in. And God says, I remember. <sighs> Jonah! Jonah was running as a rebel. But God used what happened to describe what will happen to Jesus. Jonah! He says the same way Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Was that a good testimony? Yet yeah, Jesus used it. God had Solomon for the sake of his father, David. When Solomon dedicated the temple, he lifted the temple and he said, Lord, I enter a covenant with you that whoever faces this temple and pray, whether their faith level is there or not, hearken to them. So in the days of Daniel, they signed a policy and they said nobody should pray. Daniel knew that if he will use his personal faith, he's a human being. The truth about it is that it was not just his personal spiritual life. So he opened the window to Jerusalem and he started praying. And listen, that was why he was sure when they were about to throw him in the lion's den. God did not show up because of Daniel. He showed up because of the covenant. What have you enjoyed in your life because of covenant connection? Some of us, every good thing that has happened to you has come because of your, 
your personal push which is good but brothers and sisters the demand that life will place on you will be greater than your spiritual life and if you have to wait till you become strong you may not even live for that to happen there are people in koinonia here they are not tightening but they are having strange results they even them they are doubting they are saying what's wrong something is covering you it's a covenant Break every chain. Break every chain. Those who know this do business with God upon the earth and open strange doors. Strange doors. Strange doors. Living faith, redeemed, and MFM. There are three ministries that have seen them with such a strange covenant of, of ownership. They can enter any land regardless of the vow the government made not to give them land. They must give them land as much as they want. It's a revelation. Are we together? Brothers and sisters, some things are not just about fasting and prayer. There is an advantage God placed in the body. And if you are not aware of it, you may never step into certain dimensions. Never step into certain dimensions. I came to show you certain things. God said I should teach it again. If God says I should teach it, it means many of us did not get it. There are certain things in my life I will, I will never suffer and struggle over. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that foolish. I am not that foolish. You see, it's a painful thing when you are suffering certain things that is available by covenant to the tribe you belong to. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Elijah was a man who had a covenant with God that represented the system of the prophetic and the apostolic. He had other sons called the sons of the prophet. Is that true? But he had a strange man who was a farmer called Elisha. Elisha was not a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. He casted his mantle upon him and Elisha started following him. Join other prophets. Listen. And then the Bible says a time came when Elijah, Elijah it was about to go to heaven. Is that a normal human being? Is that how you go to heaven? But that's how he went to heaven. That's how you know that it's not a normal human being. He knew where the gate of heaven was beyond the Jordan. He said, I'm about to leave. He knew where to wait for the chariots. Ah. A man was taking fresh air on a mountain and they came to harass him. He used one of the elements of the supernatural called fire. He said, I will not just use my mouth. If I be a man of God, let fire come from heaven. He prayed once and fire came. Is that how you pray when you stand? Look at what... He, hi. Koinonia, hear what I'm teaching you. Listen. When they were about to judge the prophets of Baal, there are some dimensions of witchcraft that is your covenant of connection that dislodges them. Not just your personal prayer and fasting. When the prophets of Baal were there, they were prophets under the custody of Jezebel. And look at the mockery. Elijah said, laugh. He said, he said cut yourself, shout. Maybe your God is sleeping. If I am Elijah, I will be fasting. <laughs> Deliver me, oh God. Wipe my tears. For the sake of your glory. I will be writing out the worship songs. Looking for somebody to play a cymbal. But here was a man crossing his leg. And mocking at them. From morning till evening he laughed. Because he knew they were wasting their time. After everything. They caught themselves. So that their God will see blood. And remember their covenant with him. When they tried singing and praising and it did not work. They danced around the prophets of Baal. They started bringing blood. What is blood? The covenant. Baal, remember our covenant as prophets with you. And Elijah shut the heavens and said, keep calling on him. Then when it was time for Elijah, I thought Elijah would have just said, all right, God, fire, come down. He would have been surprised. He said, give me 12 stones. 12 stones listen listen let me teach you something the bible says in the new jerusalem it said the gates of the city there were 12 gates 
and the gates had a name of the 12 tribes of Israel every one of those tribes represented a dimension of God and 12 foundations having the name of the apostles he said give me 12 stones and the prophets of Baal were watching after it he put a sacrifice and then he said pour water the water was a mystery he was not just trying to say so that you don't think I hit fire because there are three forces that open the gates in this earth realm the spirit the water and the blood so he said pour water afterwards he lifted his eyes to the heaven the pattern was correct follow me and he said oh God and the fire the Bible said the fire came licked the sacrifice and swept everything right and then hear what he said the moment that happened he said pursue all the prophets of Baal don't let one escape and kill them hear me people of God there are dimensions there are kinds of mountains that were never designed to be approached alone we fool ourselves thinking because we know God every mountain will just go like that it's all things are possible but they are they are possible based on the knowledge available to you if you can see me as I'm going you will have something the moment he left and he held the mantle he would have gone to the well and say I am a man of God part he would have been surprised he said where is the Lord God as far as God was concerned he did not see Elisha he saw the covenant did the water obey absolutely do you know why Joshua was successful God transferred a mystery to him as I was with Moses as I was the way I related with him so I will relate with you he said and because of that no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life so when the angel appeared Joshua removed his knife and he was going to kill the angel the angel had to explain he would have died the word of God would have killed the angel not the sword of Joshua he said are you for us or against us and the angel said hold on neither he had to explain because a man was running with the word of God The Bible says, for instance, it says where two or three are gathered, where? In my name. The meaning is as touching my authority. There is a dimension of God that only shows up under corporate fellowship. You will never have that dimension alone in your room. Fast for 100 days, you will not see those things. That was why the psalmist was crying. He said, early will I seek you. He said, to see your power and your glory in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. There's something I've seen that only happens when believers gather. I've not seen it. Can you make it happen in my life? Hallelujah. He says, if two of you shall agree, hold my hands, Jimmy, as touching anything, there are certain levels of prayer that is not just about, I am alone, the veil has been torn, I, I'm, I'm alone, I can access Christ. It's a system. There are certain levels of difficulty that when two or three agree, you can just say one prayer. That was why the apostles, when they were threatening them, did they pray individually? Acts chapter 4. Remember they came together because they understood this. It took that kind of grace to bring the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. They could not pray alone and have the Holy Spirit come. So when the Bible says Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come. It said they were all gathered in one accord. That formation gave the Holy Spirit room to come. In Acts chapter 4 when they threatened them. They came together and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. He says, stretch forth your right hand now to heal. And that signs and wonders be wrought through your holy child. And the building shook. There is a difference between your personal prayer life and the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a mystery of possibilities. When you understand the mysteries that govern the body of Christ, you will do things that you will never imagine you would have done. Are we together? I remember when a few people wrote jam here. You were, you were testaments of the things. Marks being added. 
I'm not talking of those 40, 40 months. You see people, someone will check his job, 197. Go and check again, 231. How did that happen? Look, let me tell you something. When you see a man of God study the systems around his life, don't just say this person is anointed. Ah, he has power. What makes the heaven owe him? It's like, it's like God, God owes certain men of God a debt he must pay. Even if they call his name joking, he has to show up. There is something that makes that happen. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. Our covenant is calling you, oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Sing it one more time. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. Is calling you, oh God, take my praise, oh God, take my praise. Listen, let me tell you something powerful. Numbers 24, let me do my teaching now. Mike. Numbers 24. Let me share something with you that will break some gates open. I want your spirit to be sensitive. Something will happen in this place today. Numbers 24. Mm. Mambro setarakota shalabratika parata. Balaam was called by Balak. To curse the nation of Israel. I've shared it here. The Lord asked me to repeat it. So I'm repeating it. Now listen. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel. It's actually 23, 24. I'm jumping for time's sake. Follow the story. He went not as in other times to seek for enchantment. Now there's a lot to say about Balaam. The Bible talks about the doctrine of Balaam. The error of Balaam. The way of Balaam. There is a long story on that. I don't want to go into that. But he set his face towards the wilderness. Let's rush it. Go ahead. And Balaam lifted his eyes. Balaam wanted to find out where. Listen, listen. Let me explain the whole scene for you. A prophet is brought by Balak. And he said, cause koinonia. Make things to start going wrong for people. Are we together? Now, Balaam tells them, look, oh, I am a prophet. In other words, I don't speak the way I want. So as we stand here, whatever you hear me say is what God is saying. Agreed? They said agreed. So they brought gifts. Balaam would have sought God by lifting his face to the hills. That's the key. Sammy said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. They know where their help comes from. But now Balaam used enchantment so that God would not be able to prophesy through him. Are you getting the story? He used divination to invoke spirits so that they will prophesy so balaam stood and after he used those enchantments he was about to curse and his mouth produced blessings and he was surprised he moved to another place again and used invocations about to speak and he blessed them he went to another place about to speak and he blessed them and balaam said balak was angry and he said what is all this i brought you to curse them all that has been coming out of your mouth is blessings. Please watch this. And Balaam lifted his eyes to check. They were on a mountain. And he said, no, I'm a prophet. Let me look. What is the reason why no cause is working? And this is what he saw. Hallelujah. And he saw Israel abiding in what? His tents. There was a spiritual formation from the valley. Israel were wise people. They didn't just say, let's rest. They said, ah, 
it is possible that the kings will come and destroy us so let us engage the formation there is a pattern hmm. they arrange themselves according to their tribes with the ark of god being at the center and they said let's see who will cause us they kept the card there so when balaam stood at the mountain to cause the ark fought him back and he said i don't know what is wrong i can't cause them i can't cause them then listen to what he said according to their stripes and finally the spirit of god came upon him this is what he said the secret and he took a parable that's how prophets remember hosea chapter 12 i have spoken in similitudes of parables i have multiplied visions he took a parable and he said balaam the son of beor had said speaking about himself and the man whose eyes are open talking about himself had said verse 4 and he had said which heard the words of god which saw the visions of the almighty falling into a trance but having his eyes open verse 5 how goodly are thy tents o jacob and thy tabernacles o israel that's the secret i look at your tent and your spiritual formation and i see you arranged in a way that no cause no enchantment that's why he said no divination no enchantment against jacob it's not just because they are christians please listen to what i'm teaching you now there was a spiritual pattern and literally balaam as a true prophet could not cause them they didn't fight they just could not cause them when it was time in in second chronicles 20 verse 20 or well we we'll read from verse 15 downwards if there's time they were about to fight three kings came together to fight them and the bible said they had another formation Kai. these guys use formations for victory not stories they inquired of the lord what pattern will produce the result and they said let the worshipers be in front and when the worshipers were in front together with the ark the warriors were behind he said this is not an issue of sword and they began to sing hearken all judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem and thou king jehoshaphat thus saith the lord be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but the lord's let's read down quickly tomorrow go up against them and so on and so forth 17. listen he said ye shall not what set yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the lord O judah and jerusalem fear not or be dismayed tomorrow you go up against them verse and joseph had bowed his head this and that and that verse 19 there's something i'm looking for now listen and the levites and the children of the Kohathites and of the children of all of those people stood up to what praise the lord of the lord god of israel with a loud voice on high right and then of course they rose early in the morning and then when they began to praise you know a prophecy came next verse it says and when he had consulted the people he appointed what look at the formation who did he appoint do you use musicians to fight war musicians to fight war three kings about to kill you i hope you know they were not acting it was real death but there was a pattern it says and they should praise the beauty of his holiness and as they went out before the army and to say praise the lord for his mercy endured forever what happened and when they began to sing and to praise the lord set ambushment against the children of ammon moab and mount Seir, which were come against judah and were smitten next verse for the children of this stood up to slay themselves read the last sentence if you're a christian want to read everyone help to destroy <sighs> military people killing themselves there were two left and he said who dies first say you either kill the other person and killed himself while they were doing that other people were there invoking a pattern listen there's something i teach the school of ministry students called the reflection principle listen i want to teach you something very powerful it's a principle that is used in occultism it's a principle that is used it was an an aberration of god's principle listen 
you only host a spirit and a dimension of the possibility of a spirit if you create the atmosphere for that spirit to feel at home as though it were in its primary place of habitation are you getting what i'm saying so if the ambassador of u.s comes to the u.s consulate office in abuja it was designed to accommodate him his appetites the colors the architecture are we together there is a pattern based on the ideology of the united states they built the embassy that way so whether he is in nigeria or he's in america it does not make any difference to him because the embassy in nigeria reflects the dexterity and the glory of america are we together now watch this if i want a spirit any spirit please give me this sir. sorry no if i want a spirit assuming i'm a herbalist i am not a herbalist assuming i'm a herbalist are we together and i want a spirit to come upon this i'm not just going to say spirit come spirit break out and then you think it will come no there is i must find out what that spirit is and the nature of its operation and the kind of atmosphere that makes it come and i will make this water become like the atmosphere the spirit must come atmospheres are magnets they draw spirits and they draw possibilities to the earth and to territories please listen to this this is very important so this is what the psalmist said the holy ghost wanting to come into the new creation he said a body has thou prepared you prepared it in such a way that when i come into that body it will be as though i am in heaven when the body was prepared the spirit could come and that body today is called the ecclesia the body of christ it was built in a particular way christ the foundation the apostolic and the prophetic and then the, it rises and he said that body you have prepared for me so god is able to function on earth because of the body that has been prepared for him are we together now when during our traditional festivals when they want to see certain spirits what do the masquerades do or the priest they wear a particular attire having a particular kind of animal skin alligator skin then some use snakes some use hyenas come on talk to me africa are we together so we have don't don't act as if you came from 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 the middle east we are here we are home amen they use fire they provoke these spirits they start chanting tongues and start moving in a particular direction they can move here small and come back again they can run and come back while they are doing that someone can be playing drums are we together and then at a particular point the snake will start coming out when the snake starts coming out they start dancing and putting fire because the snake is reflecting what is happening in the realm of the spirit so the gods are now coming the moment that happens what happens it's like people are under the anointing even the priests they are under their anointing they start doing crazy things they took fire in their mouth and nothing happens because a spirit landed let me tell you why it landed there was a pattern i counseled one man um on on tuesday on wednesday in abuja before i came He's one of the popular Nigerian directors, directors of Nigerian film, you know, and all of that. And he told me something. He said, man of God, most of the Nigerian films you see us acting, the snake we use, they are real snakes. But what they do is they go to charmers. You know, these guys are charm snakes. So they give them a particular ring so that they can pick the snake and nothing will happen. The ring has a pattern. It's a language the snake understands. That's why sometimes it backfires because those powers expire they must be renewed if at the point of expiration you are the one holding the snake the snake that you were you were in nice romance with would turn and injure you immediately 
are we together patterns so there are men whose lives are patterns you curse them it returns back to you and you are wondering see it is on this basis that you can say i am uncursable now the problem with the church is we say revelations without we we make statements without the spiritual revelation that activates those possibilities i am uncursable in the name of jesus and you find out there's a cause at work in your life clearly everybody knows you are cursed i am not cursed you are cursed we are seeing it it is on the strength of this there is a pattern don't laugh are we together so someone can vow like they vowed to paul and they said paul we will not eat nor drink until you are until you die and paul lived many years afterwards i'm teaching you something you can do on earth that is is like a spiritual formation that will make the Holy Spirit respond to you in a certain way and you will see doors open and you'll be wondering what happened is a pattern Balaam stood on the mountain and he saw the pattern and he said I can't curse them I'm trying I'm making efforts listen I can't tell you how many times on my way to travel people will call me and say apostle I just had a dream are you about to travel i say yes they say please sir don't travel i love you so much koinonia loves you i just had a dream this morning and in that dream i saw a plot and i saw that you had a ghastly motor accident and you died and then i said okay i appreciate now they are not they are not lying they saw it and what they saw was correct but there is a pattern kabarato satayaba David, I'm come and sing a song there, my spirit. Your influence is all over me, right? I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. And your influence is all over me. Let's say Listen now. Listen. Brothers and sisters. When it comes to kingdom advancement. Don't just think of your personal spiritual life alone. There are limitations to your personal spiritual life. As far as kingdom advance is concerned. There are certain strategies of witchcraft. That it takes more than you as a person to conquer. It's not that Christ is not king of kings and lord of lords. Please hear me is a law there are formations there are things that have been engaged that requires the strength of the body not your strength alone if you do not understand this you will have a lot of casualties and you will mock yourself spiritual patterns formations that make men forbidable on earth they wanted to curse him just like somebody from your village now wants to curse you 
and you have been saying in the name of Jesus I'm uncursable I agree with you potentially but you have to engage the mystery that makes your word valid otherwise you will be shouting I will not be cursed until they, they, they kill you like a chicken are we together please listen listen There are three of these spiritual patterns that I want you to learn tonight. I don't know if we can touch all three, but we'll stop somewhere and pray. The first of that pattern listen is the power of altars an altar is a pattern I'm not talking altar like coven no an altar is a token that represents a point where covenants are enacted every time a covenant is enacted an altar is raised on earth as a memorial you see that all through in scripture every time people had covenants with God or with themselves they raised what altars an altar is nothing diabolic at all an altar is just a token it's a representation it doesn't even have to be physical a representation please listen a representation a platform that affords covenant to not only be renewed not only be remembered but to be activated three things happen on altars renewal right continuity or servicing if you want to call it and then the third is activation spiritual realities are activated upon altars listen please listen every man of God every true ministry called of God has an altar they may not call it altar they may call it all kinds of things some call it covenant some call it altar I don't care what they call it but this is what it is it is a token that represents a covenant between God and that man and serves as a memorial the altar that was raised in the day of of um, Noah when he raised that altar there was a sign of a rainbow is that true and God gave this as a token when circumcision itself is a token I hope you know when you circumcise a child it's a revelation that was given to Abraham circumcise them Joshua circumcise them the power and the revelation of the patterns that altars create are things we should never take for granted especially in such a wicked world koinonia has an altar you hear us sing that song my it's nothing diabolic i don't mean babala or something no, that's not what i'm talking about as a person there are covenants that i've had through my encounters with god that have become the platforms upon which certain possibilities right the same way i have gleaned upon the covenant of others with god and it has become an advantage it has boosted my personal spiritual life it has boosted the possibilities that i can see in my own life please hear me and i want you to be sensitive we're about to pray be very sensitive right now When Abel died, when Cain killed Abel, what cried? Please answer me, what cried? And he said, the blood of Abel cries and the blood is speaking. Abel is dead. The blood is saying revenge. You have to bring vengeance upon Cain. And Jesus now says that even his blood too speaks. 
the only difference is that his blood speaks better things which were predicated on a better covenant are we together there are altars that speak over the lives and the destinies of men please listen 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 i want to give you spiritual intelligence you don't bind an altar it was enacted by covenant it's called the law of displacement there are two lights they keep shining until a greater light comes then it overshadows them are we together these are spiritual laws so many people do not know the foundation upon which their predicaments are coming they think it's just an issue of personal retreat for three days have you seen people who are praying and fasting on the last day of the fast what they were praying against is what happens maybe somebody sleeps with you in a dream and you charge and get angry and you go and say look three days i'm praying on the third day drive fast you are looking like a skeleton you are about to break you just decided to take a nap for the last 30 minutes and here the person comes as if your prayer made nonsense in the prayer you are shouting, jesus jesus and the person is just looking at you and say keep shouting your jesus there and comes to do exactly what he said to do you know why i know this thing so well because it happened in my life have you've heard my story wicked spirits will come and oppress me and come into my room my own was not even an experience I see them they see me but I couldn't do anything about it some of you say I shouted Jesus the pastor said, shout it well you shouted it well nothing happened please don't laugh I'm giving you a mystery because we're about to pray are we together we have lost the advantage of the patterns that God gave the body it's not about an individual's personal success there are times when the secret to your breakthrough is based on alignment to covenants that God has had and he will respond to you and have respect for the covenant are we together there are people who have a covenant with God that every time they show up in a city there must be breakthroughs so they show up in a city to have a crusade and when they show up to have a crusade people who have no business with that crusade receive breakthroughs that have nothing to do with that ministry because for as long as that individual is there that territory has an advantage of tapping into the covenant that he has are you getting what i'm saying there are people who personally their prayer life is dead but when they get to the prayer department on Tuesday to pray, you find out that you who was struggling to pray for five minutes, you now stretch for two hours. It's because something picked you. That's why you can go back home and say, ah. So it is God's system to help you so that even when your spiritual life is down, Satan will still not be able to reach you. Before you come back to life, there is a system that covers you. Altars that we can take advantage of there are men who when they come into a city you know everything shakes it's not by the loudness of the publicity but they come in with the presence they carry they come in with the covenants that they carry and you find out that there are strange results strange testimonies that happen to people and then they leave we'll find somewhere and stop i want to pray my life has changed like day and night because of this truth that i have discovered i found it as a key because there were certain limitations in my life though anointed though a great man of god though having encounters with jesus at a point in my life there were certain mountains that would not move there were certain doors that would not open regardless of what i did and i said lord but your word says if i have faith like a monster seed i know that i have faith and then god began to teach me for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep because they cannot discern the body their inability to discern the body that has been prepared to host the spirit 
Everything is possible. But you need to know how to make it possible. You need to know how to make it possible. This night, looking at me and hearing me by the thousands are men and women who have done certain things alone. You have struggled. Spiritually, you love God. You have held on to some of these principles. But the truth is that door has refused to open. You have done what you know to do. I show you the third key you must engage. It's called the power of alignment to covenants. The power of alignment to covenants. The power of alignment to covenants. God has entered covenants with individuals. He has entered covenants with systems. Please, I can beg you. Some of you are looking for admission. Listen to what I'm telling you and get into school. Otherwise, sit down there roaming around that you have 230 and repeat the same nonsense that has been going on. Some things in life will not move just by your personal faith. Do you know that when Jesus was on earth, he was not the only miracle worker? Please answer me. Is that true? There was a time his disciples saw other people who were not in Jesus' camp, but they were still performing miracles. Not by Baal. Not Beelzebub. And they said, ah, Jesus, this is, this is strange. Ah, I thought you were the Savior. And he said, I paraphrase him. I came to introduce something new. But until the new comes, the old is still valid. There was a way miracles were done in the old covenant. There were people who believed it. There was a priesthood that made it possible. For instance, an angel would come and steer the water. Was Jesus around when it happened? No, but it happened. A particular prophet in the Bible, when a woman was sick or someone was sick, he made herbs, leaves, and put it on the legs of the person. Are we together? If you understand what I'm teaching you, then you will know that when you stand and the mountains look like they are not, you have done all you know to do. Listen, stop trying harder. The key is not harder. The key is step back and look at the body of Christ. Don't look at yourself again. Look at the body of Christ. What spiritual tribe is connected to the possibility that will open the door I'm looking for. You can be a man of God full of grace and prayer, but you know that there is no prosperity in your ministry. And you are saying, Lord, we have prayed, we have fasted. This prosperity thing is not working. Step back and look at the body of Christ. A body has thou prepared for me. Sometimes God can give you just one instruction. Go to any living faith branch. Hold what you have as a seed and go and sow it in that. You don't even have to be prayed for. The moment you pray for it, you go back and God says, fine. What you have done is called alignment to a covenant. And God begins to relate with you the same way he relates with God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. And you will find out mysteriously, mysteriously. Something happened recently. Somebody called me and they had a court case recently. And Ejimi, this court case, humanly speaking, was already against the person. There is no human way on earth he would have won that case. And when he called me, I said, tell me the truth. When he told me everything, ah, I said, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Because I, I, I know a bit about legalities. And I know that based on that thing, if he's to spend time in the prison, it will be nothing less than 10 years away from his wife and his children. But I told him, I said, well, I don't know what to tell you, but if you can believe what I want to tell you, there can be a way out. I told him, I said, I can pray for you. God has given me grace for territories and I want to pray for you. I prayed for that guy do you know I got to find out he didn't even show up on the day of because of fear he didn't show up in the court 
he refused to show up and later he would tell me that the judge looked and looked at everything and threw away the case from the court now please brothers and sisters please you went to school you are intelligent in nigeria who does that <sighs> you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your you reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty. The Bible says Christ is the head of all principalities. He recognizes their existence. So he says your only advantage is that I am the head. Not that you say they are not here. No, it's your Bible. I'm teaching you spiritual intelligence. But many people say, assume they are not there are you kidding when they refuse jesus from entering back they say who is this king of glory he had to explain himself christ is the head of principalities he said he has been made above thrones so he recognizes them above dominions and every name that is named not only in this earth but in the world to come what do you not know that is responsible for the devil sinking through your life and making it look like God is not alive please hear what I'm saying a job will not just come because you think you're a Nigerian there are mysteries you have done there are many arrogant pastors in ministry who are suffering this they've done everything to do but the key is an alignment an alignment that opens up spiritual possibilities an alignment those who were Mina, I'm sure maybe my friend Pastor Pete Rock is listening. Pete Rock, you know, I love House on the Rock and all of that. When we went to Mina, Aaron, you were there. The same thing you see in Koinonia. Crowds here, overflow on top and then outside. is alignment. Brothers and sisters, you may be a musician, but you can align to a system that will give you more than songs. You will find out that things are opening. You are a student, but you align to somebody who is paying you salary. And they say, no, you must be sleeping with the man. You say, no, I, I, I just belong to a tribe that has a covenant with God that is respected even by hell. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, what is not at work in your life is still available. It takes humility and alignment many people will insult me for what i'm teaching you now because they would think i'm teaching you human worship god is my witness I, I i don't have time for all of those things but you have to be careful who you listen to don't let men do well meaning to deceive you there are systems on earth that represent spiritual possibilities you may argue it and never see certain things happen in your life please hear me look beyond your personal strength and look at the privileges that God has put in the body a body has thou prepared for me a body has thou prepared this koinonia that you look at every time maybe one day I will take out time and share the whole journey so that you will know that this is not just an ambition of a man to have a ministry if I want fame there are easier ways I'm not dull I can write books are we together? access to the riches and the blessings of heaven there are covenants you align with that will open you up to possibilities i don't want to begin to give you testimonies upon testimonies hallelujah we're already preparing to buy our land i will not tell you where it is until we buy it some of you will be surprised you will open your mouth and say it's a lie you can't get land like that a property that will swallow cgc how many times in this area because when you catch the keys listen 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 i don't say this to brag i'm challenging you it's, it's not by trying no door opens to shouting it opens to keys god is giving you something now you have been writing jam you are brilliant but it's not working don't stay foolish and say i i i know this time around i i got 250 no are we together? 
possibilities there are men and women who God has put in the body of Christ in territories that's why Satan creates a lot of controversy around their life to fight them so that what you are supposed to receive will not be given to you but as we pray the devil is a liar somebody's door is about to be open rise up on your feet everybody and let's pray we are going to pray three prayer points and I want you to pray it with every every ounce of strength no carelessness no looking around you are going to cry to God prayer point number one Lord I acknowledge that I am limited as a person no matter how spiritual I am as a pastor as an apostle as a prophet as a teacher as an individual I am limited and I come before you with every sense of humility acknowledging my limitation lift your voice and pray Lord I acknowledge Lord I acknowledge I acknowledge that you have built a system you have built a system beyond the personal spiritual progress of a man you have designed this mystery called the body of Christ this strategy called the body of Christ to lift men to bail them out of captivity you have designed this mystery called the body of Christ Hallelujah. Look up, please. Prayer point number two. I want you to be sincere before God. Mention all the things you know you have tried and done all you know to do but has not changed. Mention it before God because we are about to engage a mystery. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I've prayed over this failure in my family. Nothing has seemed to change. pray outside make sure you're praying those online make sure you're praying
Abalada, balada, da. So let hope, let it rise tonight. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hallelujah. Listen, as holy as man tried to be, there were some things he could not do for himself. So Jesus had to come. And man's salvation now is tied to his alignment to the finished work of Christ. It's a pattern. There are times your victory will be based on the finished work of others not just of Christ but they have cried the cry for you so you don't cry again they have taken the scars for you so you don't take it again but if you do not know Satan will cheat you there are times you will stand before that Red Sea please hear me just the same please you stand before the Red Sea and the Red Sea will refuse to part you will you will invoke your personal altar. It will not open. Let me tell you, there are stubborn challenges like that in the life of a man. You will agree with your wife, your husband. It will not move. When all else fail, switch. Switch. Remember what tribe you belong to. Remember the spiritual possibilities that come. And say, oh God of salvation. Remember, remember, remember. Remember, 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 and all of a sudden, your God will arise, not for your sake. Listen, hear me. I don't know if it's a tight booklet of redeemed or living faith. I can't remember which of them. But there was a woman who had been a faithful titan. I don't know if it's redeemed or living faith. One of the ministries, she testified. Some robbers came to her house and assassins to kill her and kill her husband. They stepped into the house, they were with guns. The man was there, his wife was there. All that there was was to shoot, and there was nothing to do. The man just he knew he was gone. All else failed, and all the woman did was to bring out her tight booklet and dropped it on the ground. Remember the covenant. Is it not your house that was built with my money? Is it not souls that are saved with my money? Don't waste your time trying to say one day God will come. No, that one day you can create it. The day the pattern is there. As powerful as Jesus was, his heavens were closed until he had to encounter a man. The heavens of Jesus did not open because he was called Jesus. It was open based on the covenant that came down to John the Baptist. And so when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, behold the lamb. And he said, that's not the issue. My heavens are closed. And he said, suffer it to be so. I can't neglect the pattern. And when John did Jesus and brought him out, there was a transference and God responded. The heavens opened and he said, this is my beloved son. Please hear me. It's not as hard as your life makes it look. You just don't know what to do. We are going to cry and say, Lord, show me what I must do to come out of this challenge in my presence. Lift your voice and pray. There is always something to do. Koinonia, cry. Show me, oh God, what is the secret, the missing link to my healing ministry. The missing link to bring prosperity to my life.
Who are thou mounting before Zerubbabel? There is a mystery. There is a pattern. There is a mystery. There is a pattern. Let hope rise. Darkness when losing your hope. Be light. Let hope let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Darkness trembles in your hope. Hallelujah. Listen. We are going to pray. Please look up everybody. We are going to pray. Just one more prayer and I will pray for us. I'd like you to pray. This ground, not I don't mean physical ground, but this mystery called koinonia is, is enshrined in strange covenants that are responsible for possibilities. Now please pay attention. We are about to pray strategic prayer. Are we together? I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I invoke the covenant that is upon this ministry. The possibilities that your appearance, the sacrifices are brought. I invoke it upon my life. Pray. The covenant of open doors. The covenant of his Shekinah glory. Access to kings. Access to strange favor. Pastors pray. Let it come upon my ministry, oh God. Pray, let it come upon my life. Say, Kamariya na malala na masere. Ese na 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 masere na na mani. E na 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 na. E na 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 na. E para na malala na na malala na 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 masere. Lord, I've eaten this jam by my strength. I've tried and tried. Lord, I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to make money by my strength. I've fasted. I've sown seed. I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to get a job. I've tried to get a job. It's not working. I cry to the God of heaven. Let hope. Let hope. Let it rise tonight. Let it rise tonight. The covenant of long life. The covenant of honor, strange honor, access to kings, access to nobles, access to royalties, access to power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you pray this next prayer, listen, there will be strange impartations and strange testimonies on people. This, these are testimonies coming from heaven. Are we together? I want you to pray it with all your heart. All your heart. All your heart. Listen. Listen. See. 
that you are part of this great house is no guarantee that you will enjoy the blessings that come. It must be intentional. Proximity is not connection. Are we together? Proximity is not connection. I have tapped into the covenant that God has had with people who have gone higher than me and they have opened me to strange doors. Realms that I know are not realms that are as a result of my personal prayer life. I'm a product of many anointings, many graces, many spiritual possibilities. Please hear what I'm telling you and step into a strange, I show you a deep mystery. Many of you will not appreciate it until you struggle and life whips nonsense out of you. You will come back to this message and it will make sense to you. There are many ministries that are anointed but they may never grow. They have done all they need to do. They have prayed. There are groups. There are all kinds of sincere people around. You've done all you know to do. Listen, you were not designed to do everything as regards your growth by yourself. That's why God put the body. A body has thou prepared. A body has thou prepared. Are we together? There are mysteries. When a Jimmy shared with me the supernatural birth of his wife, I couldn't believe it. In minutes, she had given birth. Case closed. Because there are mysteries you engage. Are we together? Please hear what I'm saying. You see Hope standing. You see Aaron's wife standing. Almost as if they didn't give birth. Right? There is a mystery. What you don't know does not mean it cannot work. You just don't know how to make it work. Are we together? We are going to pray. One last prayer with all your heart. Every area you know must work in your life. Listen, listen, listen. It pleases the Lord when you have testimonies. It pleases the Lord. There are some of us, certain sicknesses are killing us. No ma you've taken drugs, you've done everything without your imagination. There are, there, are, there are graces that we have seen. Sometimes, all it takes is recognition to say, Lord, I tap into this grace. I shared with you my story when I went to sow a seed to God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko. And when I came out, the Lord asked me, kneel down on the ground, bare ground that ground I laid my hands upon it it's not about idolizing altars and all of that no and he said lay your hands on the ground I laid my hands on the bare ground and the Lord said from this day you have entered the overflow anointing are we together it was an old woman who prophesied upon my life and said my son forever you will walk upon gold that's what that mama told me till tomorrow to whether she's a human being or an angel I don't know I bought sugar cane of 50 naira. Sugar cane of 50 naira changed my destiny forever. Are we together? You join them, you will die like them. Listen to what I'm telling you. There are many arrogant people in our society who believe they know what they are doing. Even when they are quartered to destruction, they will still be bragging. If you are not seeing results for a long time in your life, please calm down and find out what is it. Thank God for the area you are seeing results. But what of the areas where there are no results? We are going to pray. And you are going to cry to the God of your salvation in one minute. And say, Lord, the unction, the grace, the unction that must land upon my life now for those doors to open. If it did not come through my personal prayer life, then I take advantage of this spiritual formation that is in this house. I take advantage of this spiritual formation. Are we praying? Go ahead and pray. I'm about to pray for you, but pray. The anointing, Papa Rato Shata that must come upon my life, must come upon my ministry, must come upon my prayer group. The grace. Let it come, oh God, let it come. Let it come, oh God, let it come. 
Let it come, oh God, let it come. Sakata prakata bara na bala kusoto praskate. Emprakata kata tata po kusoto prakata bara na bosh. Makata pakarata kasekete. Emprakas kata bas kabo soto bari kata. Pareke teke teke tepe kete kotos. Meka praskata bara tati. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everyone. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Spirit, pray out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Lift your hands Father I'm about to pray for you Something will come upon your life right now and I want you to believe it. In the name that is above all names. Father, it is by your wisdom and by your orchestration you designed the body. No one designed it and gave it a blueprint. You designed the blueprint of the tabernacle in heaven. And you gave Moses and said reproduce it on earth. And the moment they built according to pattern, your glory came. Lord, there is a spiritual formation in this house that makes for your presence that makes for influence that makes for honor that makes for effective prayer lives and lord i pray that that grace in no small way by covenant i cry upon you the god of my salvation that tonight oh god you remember your covenant with this house and that you change the lives of people therefore right now i pray i stretch my hands at the count of three I pray that this grace will come upon people right now. Father, remember the covenant. One. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Take it now. 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 Wherever you are, I challenge those mountains. Take the anointing. Challenge the business mountain. Take the anointing. Challenge death. Challenge it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Take it now. Please help them. Inside and outside, I release that grace. The grace that is an incense from the covenant upon this house. Every spirit that has refused to leave your destiny to move forward. Right now in the name of Jesus. The same way Balaam could not cause Israel. I command that spirit. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the voice of the altar. Be gone now. Be gone now. Be gone now. Be gone now. Shake it. Be gone now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see things leaving the stomach of ladies. Many ladies. This is what I'm saying. Something that looks, I don't know what it looks like, honestly. But I'm seeing it leaving people in strange ways. Lord, let it go. Let it go, whatever it represents. Now, now, now. Let it go. Every sickness. Let it go. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Heaven, calm down. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, those on this road. Just lift your hands, those on this road. Because I just saw a wind move here. Very, very serious formation. And the Lord is saying that this grace, this grace is for supernatural results. That's what is happening. I stretch my hands right now. Right now, right now. All through. All through. Right now. I stretch my hands. All through this row. Remember the covenant, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Take men to deeper levels. Acceleration. Speed. 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 Spirit break out. 
break our walls down. Spirit, break out. Hallelujah. One last prayer. Listen. It is not to be abused, but there are many of us, our prophetic dimensions are closed. I need to activate it right now. There are many men of God here. You pray, but your, your perception is not powerful. Your, 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 your radar, I mean, come on now, you, you can't be a man of God, a woman of God, and your perception. All your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit are deadened. I want to pray for you. There needs to be a prophetic generation. It's not just about prophesying to people. It's about having a blueprint of the details of your destiny released for you. Are we together? Lift your hands. The last prayer point, inside and outside. Please, listen. From you, my dear, hold your hands to this lady, this one. St stand up. I don't know who you people are, but there's something I'm seeing. I'm seeing a line from all of you. It's like you are coming from somewhere. Is that true? Hold your hands. Something will come upon you. Just you people now. I stretch my hands at the count of three. Let this strange grace come. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it right now. In a strange way, it begins to burn from within your spirit. You will never be the same. Never, 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 never be the same. Lift your hands. I want to pray for everybody now. Please, I'd like you to pray. There needs to, that prophetic dimension has to come alive. Otherwise, there are limitations. God wants to show you things about your destiny but you must have the eyes to see and the ears to hear in the name of jesus father at the count of three i'm praying by the unction of the holy spirit the spirit of prophecy grace that gives men access to portals in the spirit at the count of three take it now one, two, take it, take it, take it. I open it. I open it. I open it by the power of the Holy Ghost. I activate dreams, prophetic dreams, prophetic encounters, prophetic experiences. Hear the voices of the Spirit. Hear the sounds in the spirit. I release upon you that grace for dreams. Not foolish dreams. Prophetic dreams. Receive it now. Right now. Dreams. Dreams. Visions of the night. Dreams. Strange dreams. Visions of the night. Hallelujah. I pray for you. Whatever has made your perception dull so that you don't pick signals in the spirit. I stand before the God whom I serve and I stretch my hands towards you. May a configuration happen to your spirit man right now. Right now as I speak, I release that grace, strange grace for perception, strange grace for discernment, strange grace for perception strange grace for discernment strange grace for perception strange grace for discernment strange grace for perception Spirit I pray for you whatever testimony your personal spiritual life has been unable to deliver to you Go and return with that testimony now. Go and return with that testimony right now. Go and return with that testimony right now. Hear me? 
every blessing that should enter your life but has not entered for as long as you come for koinonia and you don't find the chairs empty i command that the same way this house is always full may your destiny be full may your destiny be full may your destiny be full in the name of jesus christ The spirit of revelation you have been crying for access into the mysteries of the kingdom the spirit of revelation you have been crying for the spirit of revelation you have been crying for every time you pray you cry for revelation I release my faith with you may that unction come now let it come upon you may that unction 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 come upon you right now may it come upon you in the name of jesus christ the grace for prayer you have prayed it the grace for prayer you don't just pray there is a grace it's not it's not what you do when you like i stretch my hands koinonia upon you a baptism of fresh grace to travel take it Take it, take it, take it, shake it, take it, the spirit of prayer and supplication, the quickening of the Holy Ghost upon your spirit man, swallowing up the limitations of your flesh, giving you capacity to stay in the place of prayer, take it now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. New prayer altars, new prayer altars, new prayer altars, new prayer altars by the power of the Holy Ghost. New prayer altars in the name of Jesus. New prayer altars. I fan them to flames new prayer altars new prayer altars nothing is worthy enough to destroy your prayer life new prayer altars with a strange grace not by trying not by trying there is an unction that empowers a man to swallow up the mortality of his body and stretch in the place of prayer new prayer altars new prayer altars by the power of the holy ghost I take away from your life the spirit of slumber in the name of Jesus father we give you all the praise we have to close our time is gone give Jesus praise lift your hands and give Jesus praise Hallelujah. Listen. I want to advise you, everyone here, go and get this series on the secrets of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom, and some of these secrets. I want you to listen to them. The media stand is there. It's free. Listen to them and pray them into your life. Don't just listen to them and mock yourself. Some of us, you know you are not doing it. You are not doing it. You don't listen to these teachings and they don't build it. It's not about asking you to listen to my teachings. It's about something you need to receive. A programming you are doing upon your spirit man that will make you succeed. Father, we give you all the praise.